Hey there. It's Saturday, y'all. It's Saturday. Y'all, the, there's new documents in this defamation case, and we're gonna we're gonna break it down. I am not going to read these. It is well over 200 pages. So we're gonna break it down. I'm gonna talk about me being talked about in legal documents, and we're going to redefine our threat level for this evening. So hang in there. Let's ride. Hi there. If we haven't met yet, I'm Emily D. Baker. I'm the badass lawyer, host of The Emily Show podcast, and I am a legal commentator, breaking down the legal shit behind the news and pop culture stories that we all want to talk about. I have been a licensed attorney for over 15 years, but this is not legal advice. I am a big fan of the cursey words, so headphones are recommended. This is where the law nerds unite with facts, not fuckery. Y'all, y'all, y'all. I have been struggling with how this is all relevant, and I am going to try to break it down for you the best I can figure, because there's a lot. I put up polls today on the Twitters and the Instagrams, because when there was this much fuckery afoot, I was like, we need a rating system. Like, we need a rating system. Y'all voted. Y'all voted on a color-coded system so we could match the lights. You're brilliant. I didn't even think of it. Thank you, law nerds. So what what we're going to do is we're going to go from green to yellow to orange to red. I've named them, but green is kind of our least level. Yellow is our like mm, level. There's names. We'll do them another day. Orange is going to be our fuckery of foot level. And red is going to be our what the fuckery level. Tonight, the lights are red. We are at DEF CON what the fuckery. I'm going to, for everyone watching on the replay, hi. There will be timestamps down below of when I get into breaking down the documents and when I get into taking questions <sighs> and when I get into a breakdown of the case. So here's my intention to kind of road so far this bitch real quick, road so far real quick, done on. We're going to do it quick because there's a lot of videos on it so far. Then we're going to do WTF is this new filing? Why is it so long? And it is 221 pages of one declaration, like six pages of another declaration, and four or five pages of a motion. It is a lot. It is a lot. And it filed and went up like right before um, we, or right after we were live for our regular Friday Night Live. And we're not, we are not going to interrupt our Friday Night Live for fuckery. So, so that's what's going on. Yes, I am mentioned in these. I've seen it. I'm going to put on social media our whole rating system. And then I'm going to say hello. And when I get into the topics, I'm going to, for me, just kind of turn my view of the chat off so I don't get distracted. I love you all. <laughs> I'm going to try to do this not taking forever. Um, and because the mods, we have had multiple extra rides this week. Lots of rides, lots of rides. So we're at red, though this looks kind of pink to me, but we are at red level, what the fuckery, and um, we're still at 45 line paper, like you know how your girl feels about things, so I will put up on Twitter kind of what we came up with for the fuckery level breakdowns, I will also put that up on Instagram, so if you don't follow me there, it's the Emily D. Baker, if you guys are new here, do the youtube -y things, we are just going to get into it, and then... And then, thanks, Steph, we will answer your questions. I just want to get past the big mad part, and then we'll get to having a chitty chitty chat chat part. Y'all, 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 there's, I don't have words. There is so much stuff. And the, the, even the recap on this case is going to take a minute. So you know what we should do? We should just get into that. We should get into the road so far case brief on the Tati Westbrook defamation lawsuit. Tati Westbrook sued YouTube channel and YouTuber channel without a crystal ball, YouTuber KJ, as we call her on this channel. Tati Westbrook's attorney is not a party to this case, but you wouldn't know it from this latest filing. He is Michael Saltz. We call him Saltzy. The other attorney in this case is Michael Brown, 
We call him Brown. Some in the chat have called him Brown Sus. I thought it was funny, but my kid plays among us. Um, so we've got Salty, Brown, KJ, and her channel, WACB. Those are the parties. The positioning or the situation of this case, the procedural posture, if you will. And the procedural posture is the legal world for what the fuck has happened this far. We're just going to say what the fuck has happened this far. Toddy Westbrook's side filed a complaint. The complaint says, hey, defendant, KJ and channel, you did some shit. Other plaintiffs in this case, by the way, James Westbrook and Halo Beauty, the vitamin supplement company owned by Toddy, her husband, and their business partner. That's a separate conversation and a separate lawsuit. So you did some shit. We think that you can't do the shit that we're saying that you did. Then, then shenanigans happened on the interwebs. We all watched it go down right after that filing popped off, um, what, October 30th? And then there was another filing in quick succession. The reason I bring up October 30th is because in quick succession, I did a video on this case. Uh, it did grow. And then there was some Twitter shenanigans. And then I made a tweet regarding that. And that tweet has ended up in this declaration, which is amusing. So filing... Then there was a motion to not delete your shit. The legal term is a motion to preserve evidence based on things observed on the internet by the person who filed that declaration. That was a salty declaration saying, hey, we've observed these things. We don't think you can do that. That motion was resolved by a stipulation between the parties. The two attorneys went, yeah, we agree. Shit shouldn't be deleted. Great, great. We don't need the court to be involved. Then Generally, what happens is there is either procedural motions or an answer to the complaint. In this case, there were procedural motions. That motion being a, hey, you don't have jurisdiction. All of us are tired of talking about jurisdiction. These these are the most filings I've ever seen for a, a motion to dismiss based on jurisdiction ever, like ever. It's so many. It's so many filings. I'm going to have to make a flow chart just like I've done for the Girardi case just to give you all a visual image of how many filings there have been in this case. So, so many filings. Complaint, motion to not delete your shit. It's over. It's been stipulated. Then the motion to dismiss. The motion to dismiss is the one that talked about Shane and Jeffrey and Trisha Paytas and, and, and PewDiePie and all of the things. All, we all had strong feelings about the motion to dismiss. It didn't cite the law. It read like a blog post. It was hard to read. It was confusing at times. And then they said, oh, and by the way, there's no jurisdiction over us. Hey, your honor, you're not the boss of me. We, defendant and business, live in Minnesota. This suit is in Washington state federal court. And um, you're not the boss of me. You can't hear this case. You don't have authority here. And this is why. And that sparked a wave, if you will, perhaps a tsunami of litigation. Defendants filed their motion to dismiss. Plaintiffs, Toddy Westbrook et al., filed their opposition to the motion to dismiss. Then, the, after the opposition was filed, there were videos. Defendant put out videos. Then there was a precipe, which is a motion to include more shit, then after the precipe from Toddy Westbrook's side was filed being like, hey, there's more shit. And the precipe included um, declarations from multiple parties, precipe. Then the defense filed a reply to the plaintiff's motion to dismiss. Then other stuff happened and plaintiffs filed another precipe saying, but wait, there is even more shit. That was the Lorianne declaration. Then... There was a sir reply. No, the sir reply might have had the Lorianne declaration. The sir reply might have had the Lorianne declaration in it. Then we are here with the precipe from the defense being a, hey, your honor, but wait, there's more shit. This is a direct response truly to the Lorianne declaration, though it gets into the Kim Fulmer declaration, which was included in the plaintiff's original precipe. This is why a chart is needed. Then, then, in between the last thing that was filed on, you know, a week ago, and on Monday, the defense, KJ, WACB et al., filed a motion, a motion for emergency um, 
conference hearing regarding shit that was happening all up on the Twitters. I have a video breaking that down and what I thought of it. I asked you guys what you thought of it. Um, most of you felt that the declaration there and the evidence contained therein didn't quite line up uh, the way the motion said they did. And I get it. I think still that what's going down in that motion is still asking the court to take jurisdiction over this case. We'll see what the court does with that. There are responses due from plaintiff's side on that next week. So there are two briefing schedules happening right now. The motion to dismiss based on jurisdiction is what we're talking about today. But there's also this outlier motion with regard to the motion for emergency status conference with regard to shenanigans up on the Twitters. And if we get distracted on that one, we're never going to get through this one. So that is the road so far. That is the road so far. There are over 5,200 Lawnards up in here. Hello, Lawnards. Thank you for riding with me on a Saturday night. Um, buckle up. Keep all hands within the ride. Permane ser sentados, por favor. We are going to just just pull this up and get into it. Um, and I'm going to keep forgetting to ask you to do the YouTube things. The mods will will remind you. Just like and and do the things. We we hit eighty thousand subs yesterday. It was really exciting. <laughs> so if you're new here and you're watching this because you are also like WTF is happening on the internet right now. That's not Trisha Paytas. Um, this this is this is happening. So this was filed in three different documents. As we go through these, it is always my goal to teach you how to read and understand some of these documents. Also, I forgot my disclaimer. Also, also, the law nerds are a classy bunch, and I appreciate the fuck out of you guys because when stuff has gone down on Twitter this week, including um, threats against me, targeted harassment against me, threats against my family, I've also received that not on you know Twitter in a public way behind the scenes. We haven't gotten into it a lot. We're not going to get into it a lot, but you guys have really kept. Um, kept your hands clean of like fighting, fighting back. Cause some of that shit is just fuckery on the internet. And we, we don't fuck with that. We are facts, not fuckery. I appreciate all of you that have screenshotted stuff and made me aware of stuff and just been like, Oh, we're calling it. We see it. There it is. There it is. There's the fuckery. We spot it. And I appreciate that. Even though there is a very polarizing figure in this lawsuit who does like to have my name in her mouth, we are not fucking with it. We don't fuck with you. We're not talking about it. We are not talking about her. We are not dragging her. We're not speculating about her. Yes, I have seen. Yes, I am aware. We keep moving. We talk about lawsuits here. We don't need to talk about people. Other channels need to talk about people. We just talk about the lawsuits and the facts. We don't need, we don't need to drag anybody. Other people might want to drag me. You know what? What they do on their channel is what they do on their channel. What we do on this channel is talk about the documents. And I appreciate you guys for being on board with that. Um, and for keeping it that way in the chat and for keeping that that way on social. Because again, as I've said in most of these videos, if not all, being in litigation like this is really stressful. We are here to break down the litigation. Why the defense has turned this into a three-ring circus, I do not know, but it seems to be their position of the case that the plaintiff side has turned this into a three-ring circus. I disagree with that assessment based on what I've witnessed with my own eyes Up on the internet. There has been fuckery to the highest degree, and that's why there are so many filings. This filing, um, this filing was not needed. It's irrelevant. It's kind of a waste of money in my opinion, but they wanted to get this out here, so here it is. These were filed in three parts, and you will see at the top the docket number. So you'll see page one of two as I combine them into one file for my own purposes when I'm reading through them. But you'll see the pages will change up here, and that's why, because it's three parts. It's the precipe, like legal document saying, hey, your honor, but wait, there's more shit, and we would like to tell you about all of it. Then there are two more declarations, one from Brown, one from KJ herself, and away we go. Oh, statement, statement of the case. We got it. My opinion on this, you're going to get it. You're going to get my opinion throughout. Remember, Emily, you've said you were jumping into it three times. Yep. Remember, this is still a motion to dismiss. Like there's, 
there's still we're still in the motion to dismiss over jurisdiction. Like we've gotten so far the fuck away from jurisdiction that all of you are going to be reading this going, wait, what are we fighting with Lorianne? What's happening? Like, are what are we just are we suing Salty? I don't understand what's going on here because none of this seems to be about jurisdiction. You're correct. Your confusion is correct. We're still in a jurisdiction motion. I will just remind you of the law because sometimes we just talk about the facts of what's in these things. But the law is if there is a factual dispute in a motion regarding jurisdiction and a motion to dismiss in general, the factual dispute is weighed in favor of the plaintiff. So any of the time the defense is going to be like, yeah, but all of the factual disputes will be resolved in the favor of Toddy Westbrook because of where we're at in the proceedings of the thing. That doesn't mean that that's the way going forward. That's the status. That's the, the position we're in at this point before we move forward into actual litigation we're just at the fucking beginning. The court still hasn't said, I have jurisdiction over y'all. So we're still in that part, the very beginning part, the tip, the tip of the iceberg. It's just the tip. And there is so much that has happened. So with that in mind, there are a lot of factual disputes up in here. I think those factual disputes are for the benefit of the interwebs and not for the benefit of the court. We will see how the fuck the court feels about it. I imagine by this point, the Honorable Barbara J. Rothstein is salty as fuck. As fuck. Salty. As There's a research attorney going, why am I reading all of this? How is any of this relevant? You will see my notes in it asking about relevancy. Um, defendants precipe to reply in support of motion to dismiss. So this is adding to their reply, because remember, there was plaintiff's precipice, then defense reply, then there was a sir reply, and now we're at the precipice, like defendants are adding more shit to their reply to the plaintiff's opposition to the defense motion to dismiss. Okay, now that that's clear as mud, let's move on. We know what a precipice is, it's cool. Um, we're still on 45 line paper, you know, that annoys me should be 26. We're going to keep moving on because I keep beating that dead horse. And it's, it's just, it just personal, personal preference to adhere to the court's, you know, orders about, about these things. These two supplemental declarations demonstrate that almost every material assertion set forth in the declaration of Lori Ann Barnhart filed with plaintiff's precipice on January 13th, 2021. Why do I feel like the De Lori Ann declaration was more than 10 days ago? Like, I feel like the Lori Ann declaration was 150 years ago. Let me know in the comments if you agree that the Lori Ann declaration feels like it was absolutely 9,000 years ago. Like the Lorianne Declaration was written in 1815 BC. No, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Okay. Is demonstrably false and is flatly contradicted by the very emails on which the declaration purports to rely. There's a video on the Lorianne Declaration. I'll link it. Those emails reflect 18 days of written communications between Ms. Barnhart and the undersigned, uh, Brown, the undersigned attorney as well as two telephone calls. Of critical importance is the fact that Ms. Barnhart's testimony relies heavily on characterizations of those emails, but plaintiffs fail to attach a single one of those emails in her declaration. Well, it should be their declaration, but okay. Um, right, but they said they'd make them available for the court. So, I mean, whatever. There's no justification for that failure other than they, I mean, they said they'd attach it, but cool. Miss Barnhart's file declaration is also perfectly, perfectly inconsistent with a declaration she helped the undersigned prepared and was ready and eager to sign on January 6, 2021, before she, quote, flipped sides in this dispute and signed a declaration on behalf of plaintiffs. Defendants believe that this sudden recantation is explained by the facts set forth in the supplemental Brown declaration filed herewith. Now keep in mind, Brown has stated that his, his declaration, 220 pages of declaration is supposed to set forth why there was this flip. What that has to do with jurisdiction? I don't know, but here's the thing. Lori Ann's declaration from plaintiffs from my perspective, was going to establish more of an agency with somebody who lived in the state of Washington. Just briefly, the Lori Ann 
Lori Ann was brought into this um, in the Kim Fulmer declaration that was filed in a precipice after KJ went live on December uh, end of December 29th or something. Um, and so after KJ went live, there were super chats from Lori Ann. It was known that Lori Ann lived in Washington. The whole jurisdiction beef is did KJ do enough in Washington? Did her company, her LLC, WACB, do enough in Washington to let a Washington court be the boss of them for the purpose of this litigation? That is the point. Lori Ann lives in Washington. There were screenshots of super chatting. And then there was discussion in Kim Fulmer's declaration that Lori Ann worked for the Department of Transportation. We've now seen the Lori Ann declaration that says, that's not me. I'm a different Lori Ann. So that's kind of where we're at with all of this. Let's jump back into the document. And I'm trying to make this as big as I can for y'all. All right. Oh, too big. Too big. I need to be able to see it too. All right. Also of critical importance is this. Shortly after Ms. Barnhart's declaration was filed, defendants came into possession of evidence that strongly suggests Ms. Barnhart may not have been aware of what she was signing when she executed that declaration and did not understand which side of this dispute she was in communication with when the declaration was prepared. You guys can go back to that video and take a peek at is does that square with what you read in that declaration? We're not going to juxtapose these two or we will be here for 700 years. No, we would be here for like five hours. We're not doing that. This is the wrong screen. We need to go this way. Good job, Emily. Professionals here, people. Professionals. Second supplemental declaration of Catherine Paulson. I have feelings. Here are my feelings. The more times your client has sworn declarations in litigation, the more opportunities the other side has to poke holes in that. I prefer to see less, to see the absolute bare minimum when it comes to parties in a litigation. The key point of litigation is try to give them less to work with and not more. However, it's clear that they feel that there was a need to put this in here. That's not helpful. There we go. All right, second supplemental declaration. There are now three KJ declarations in this case. KJ, over the age of 18, I make this declaration to respond to assertions contained in the declaration of Lori Ann Barnhart. I will refer to that as the second declaration. And when we get to Brown's declaration, they refer to the Lori Ann declaration. They wanted her to sign as the first one and then the one she signed for Saltsy as the second one. Then they get into factual disputes. Again, factual disputes and a motion to dismiss are going to go to the plaintiff. So factual disputes are technically irrelevant, but also it feels like everybody really wants this to be said. So here we all are. Um, Ms. Barnhart contacted me to tell me it was her intention to contact plaintiff's attorney and notify them about the inclusion of the work um, contact information of the wrong Lorianne. And I quote, told her expressly not to contact plaintiff's counsel, but to contact her attorney, Michael P. Brown instead. That is when you see this docket number, this is the number and line at line 19. See when the lines line up, it makes it real easy to know what line you're on line 19. This is completely false. The actual December 24th conversation from Twitter is set forth below. Now, what's interesting is that at some point in all of this, um, Lorianne deleted her Twitter. So I don't know if these were screenshotted or if these came back up. But at some point before this filing, Lorianne had deleted her Twitter. So the actual conversation is below. Um, this is the 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 screen, the screen, not screenshot, Emily profile picture. There we go. It's been a long couple of days. The profile picture that we've seen on these accounts the whole time. Um, and then this is the conversation. I said, she wrote a declaration. I don't know why I am being, what I am being accused of and why this lawyer docks me when I have nothing to do with this. So this is after the Kim Fulmer declaration dropped on, I think it dropped in the morning of New Year's Eve because I recorded a video on New Year's Eve and put it up 
about that declaration because there was a lot in that. Um, New Year's Eve was the deadline for the plaintiff's opposition to the defendant's motion to dismiss. Uh, I have no clue who Tati even is. I can't speak about this. I can't a- accurate and appropriate. Okay, I'll call Mr. Saltz then. I am under advisement to speak to no one. That's okay. He's the one that filed it, so I'll contact him. You can speak to my attorney if you like. He isn't sure if he can, if he can't help. Um, are they in today? That's double negatives. Um, I've never seen my Twitter DMs look like this, but y'all let me know because I'd love my Twitter DMs to be purple. Like my Twitter DMs are not, they're not this cute. Um However, I don't think this conversation disproves the way that Lorianne interpreted the conversation because, again, Lorianne's interpretation and her declaration versus KJ's declaration, if, okay. Also, um, it's, it's not really, rel- it, I, don't, I still don't see the relevance. Continuing on, are they in today? Yes, email. Okay, thank you. I can't speak to anyone. I understand. Really sorry. Uh, It's not you. This is how they silence people. I can only imagine how you and your family are doing. Reach out if you like. Funny how me, Zag, and Boots all got doxxed around the same time. I, again, I still haven't seen that Lorianne got doxxed. I know that the other Lorianne's information was out there, but the other Lorianne's not connected to a social media account. It was the work information. So I'm still confused about the conversation of the doxing, because if it's not your information, that doesn't square with how I understand, you know, all of that to work. But I can understand the feeling of someone trying to dox you, but okay. Um, When that slimy lawyer came on the scene, I'm presuming they're talking about Saltsy at this point. I know you can't talk. I'm just vetting. I can't speak on anything again. I'm sorry. Of course, what needs to happen? So moving on. There's going to be a lot of water tonight. I'm trying to keep it quiet, but I did a live stream earlier today <laughs> and I did a two hour live stream yesterday. We're just, we're just dry. We're just dry. So that's the conversation that they had about it. There was a conversation about it. We now, the, these declarations seem to continue to have contradictory stuff in them. It's like, oh yeah, but, oh yeah, but, oh yeah, but. Cool. Um, the second declaration asserts that Lor- that Lorian and I communicated on an extremely frequent basis. This is not true. So the defense positioning again is going to be, this is a factual argument. The factual argument is that I didn't have the contacts with Lorianne. They said I had, therefore I don't have enough contacts with the resident uh, of the state of Washington. Therefore I don't have enough contacts with the state. Therefore, I don't have um, enough contacts in the state to have jurisdiction in Washington. Here's the thing, though. (sighs) Making additional factual arguments in a declaration is not really the point of the declaration. It's just saying, okay, this is not true. This is my side of that. But there are like interwoven arguments within this. Declarations aren't traditionally argumentative. It's just like, okay, that's not true. This is why. That's not true. This is why. These are like blending motion argument and declaration. And of course, I understand why they're doing it. I don't know how the court will take it with how much back and forth has happened. And with the fact that some of this is, in my opinion, um, conclusory, some of it is lacking foundation, and a lot of it is Uh, factual argument, again, factual arguments going towards the plaintiff in this type of motion. Again, because that is the posture of the law, because the plaintiffs are the one who pick jurisdiction, the factual stuff goes to their side. It says, the second declaration asserts that I somehow deputized Ms. Barnhart to perform tasks for me as my agent or bulldog. This is nonsense. Ms. Barnhart voluntarily inserted herself into my channel and into social media conversations related to my channel. I had never asked her to perform tasks for me. Um, Then it gets into paragraph 10. Ms. Barnhart refers to an exchange we had after I blocked someone from communicating with me because of what I found to be inappropriate conduct. I casually stated that she could explain that to this person why she had been blocked. This was not a quote assignment from me as a quote agent or a quote bulldog. So Lorianne in her declaration said, I was one of KJ's bulldogs. I was one of her ride or dies. 
And there were tweets that kind of supported that assertion. KJ is saying, um, no, that's just like colloquialisms. The second declaration asserts that I instructed to mass flag. Mass flagging is irrelevant here. To that, she asked, KJ's already said, I've never asked her to do anything for me. Okay, well then that's your assertment of fact. If you didn't ask her to do anything for you, were there contacts in the state of Washington, the court can decide. Getting into this is really just to get back to those creators, I think, hey, this wasn't done. This is my side of that story. But this is all really um, irrelevant to the facts from the defense perspective for arguing jurisdiction. The plaintiff included it to say, look at how much of an agent I am. But if the statement is, I've never asked her to do anything, then that statement stands on its own from my perspective. This gets into what went on with creator Little Red and what went on with creator Sherelle's world and why there is justification for what was done and that it wasn't in fact mass flagging. Then she said, again, this is not mass flagging as the name suggests. And then she gets into defining mass flagging, which in my opinion lacks foundation, but okay. I did it on occasion to make facious references on Twitter to Miss Barnhart being one of my ride or dies. But Facia says it's a deliberate statement that kind of extends the humor of a thing. So if you guys all looked it up, let me know in the comments. Not, not a uh, SAT word that's regularly used, but it's a deliberate use of kind of a darker humor to deliberately kind of exaggerate something. So she's saying, okay, well, I deliberately referred to them as this to kind of bolster things. Um, it was not meant literally, obviously. I'm sure the court will love it being pointed out that it's obvious, but this goes on and say, says, I understand Miss Barnhart confirmed again, that's going to lack foundation. We're just getting into the, the nitty picky of the law stuff. If you understand, then that means it was told Then that means it was hearsay, but there's hearsay in all of these declarations as we've gotten up to this point. Um, I understand Miss Barnhart confirmed this in an email to my attorney saying, well, either you read the email or you didn't read the email. And if you didn't read the email, you don't have, you don't have foundation or personal knowledge. And if you did read the email, then just say, this is confirmed in the email. Moving, moving on. That is the end of that declaration and into the Brown declaration. And as you can see, page one of 221. Y'all, it's time. Everybody just <sighs> reset the room. We're only 30 minutes in. I'm talking fast. Take a drink, take a breath, Pop more popcorn. I'm not reading this whole thing. We're going to cruise through it, and then I'm going to answer questions. I'm sure these are already available somewhere online. If you want to read the entire damn thing for yourself or haven't already, and I know um, that others, I believe Uncivil did like a four-hour read-through. We're not reading through the whole thing. We're not. We're, we're not. We're not. Um this gets into on the evening of January 13th, plaintiffs filed a precipe and a declaration of Lori Ann Barnhart in support of their opposition to defendant's motion to dismiss on grounds of lack of personal jurisdiction. This is the second declaration Ms. Barnhart agreed to sign under oath within the space of one week. In that short period of time, she agreed first to sign one on behalf of defendants prepared by me with her direct involvement and assistance, and then another prepared by plaintiff's counsel containing irreconcilable statements of fact. Okay, but here's the thing. A, I didn't pull it back up. Sorry, y'all. Okay, so how if you, how do you want the court to part, parse which one is correct? How do you want the par court to parse it? The one that's unsigned or the one that's signed? Because again, in the motion to dismiss, disputes of fact go to Tati. So the court's going to default to the declaration signed by Lorianne on behalf of plaintiffs but okay. Okay. So they are referring to the second declaration as the one she signed for Salty. And the first declaration is the one they worked on together. The first declaration, in fact, as explained below, the emails irrefutably show that the only reason she did not sign it is that I decided it was best not to file it on the evening of January 6th. Okay. The hastily prepared lawyer shade. Second declaration comes after Ms. Barnhart sent me over 80 emails 
during an eight, it doesn't follow well during an 18 day period, telling a story that was one reduced to writing and two explicitly approved by Miss Barnhart in the first declaration on January 6th. That extremely well-documented story is in most material respects, perfectly inconsistent with the second declaration. I mean, conclusory, but fine, which plaintiff's counsel prepared and filed in the one day after they first made contact with her. I have a video on that. It seemed that plaintiffs from reading it felt that that was urgent to do, and they chose to do that. Um, it was done very, very quickly. But this reads so far like a motion, not like a declaration, because it has a lot of statements of conclusion and fact versus I observed, I was this. This is Brown arguing against the way Saltsy has done things, and that is the entire reading of this. So you guys are going to get to decide how you feel about it. But for me, we have you seen the word jurisdiction? We're not talking about jurisdiction. This is attacking A, Saltz, and B, their declaration of Lorian, saying that that declaration should, I mean, they're not, they can't really even ask the court to disregard it. That's what they're going to do. But it was a signed declaration. They're saying it shouldn't have been signed is or or it should be discounted because it directly contradicts what she said in emails to them. You guys are going to have to decide. You guys are going to have to decide what you think about that. We're going to go through the facts. And yes, where are we? It is it is replete with plainly improvable false accu uh, assertions of fact. Remarkably, the falsity of much of the second declaration is proven by very email conversations on which it expressly relies. Plaintiff's attorneys publicly bragged on Twitter that they had these emails and reviewed them before preparing the second declaration and procuring Ms. Barnhart's sworn signature to it, attached as Exhibit A, a true and correct copy of a tweet posted by plaintiff's counsel. Twitter, Twitter is evidence but they deliberately and without justification withheld them from the court. Again, I thought they offered them in a footnote. It's in video. Presumably because, as demonstrated below, they are flatly inconsistent with the declaration they prepared and put in front of Ms. Barnhart to sign. I mean, it's a statement of fact. Plaintiff's counsel explains the failure to include emails by stating, one, Ms. Barnhart now believes she had an attorney-client relationship with me, and two, the emails contain sensitive health information. This is frivolous. As to the the later in the motion, I will say, he goes on to say some of these are filed under seal due to health information. So calling that frivolous and then saying later that some of these are redacted or filed under seal seems to be contradictory to me. But as to the first plaintiff's counsel knows full well that a person cannot file a declaration characterizing the contents of emails in order to establish some argument and at the same time withhold the emails themselves on the grounds of privilege. I don't think he said they were withheld on privilege, but I'd have to go back and look. As to the second, the vast majority of emails between Barnhart and I, including emails that plaintiffs characterize inaccurately in the second declaration, contain no health information at all. And if, and to any extent they did, the information could easily have been redacted. So they're saying you should have put the emails in. They didn't choose to put the emails in. The court's going to be like, well, we've got all the emails now. So I'm not reading any of them. Away we go. <laughs> we'll, we'll rule this thing how we'll rule this thing. Defense is arguing through this whole declaration that what plaintiffs did was wrong. And I'm not surprised at all because in the Lorian declaration, there are big allegations towards Brown and very big statements made against Brown saying that he encouraged her to sign a page so that the declaration could be modified later. That's addressed in here that he was encouraging her to file a declaration against Saltsy. That's addressed in here. She said that she didn't feel right about it. Didn't feel right about the way the declaration was and didn't want to sign it. People have the right to change their mind. That's addressed in here. So there is a lot of argument and back and forth. I understand why Brown was like, no, we are not allowing the record to stand with the way that this was cast. I am going to tell my side, even though the court might not take this into account with regard to the motion to dismiss, this is their side making their record um, in, in, in a lot of pages. 
Notwithstanding these compelling evidentiary grounds for disregarding the second declaration, it's important to address the merits of the second declaration because many of its assertions are very serious and very false. The, the false. Then we get into the sections. This is written more like a motion than most of the motions in this case. But it goes through the context, they say, of the declaration. It says they address numerous falsities in the second declaration. These are my thoughts contemporaneous to reading this. A lot of those are attached. I'm attaching the relevant emails with the exception of those containing especially sensitive health information. Though on the last page, it was like, that's ludicrous that there's sensitive health information. What are you even talking about? So, okay. They, he is denying an attorney client relationship. He is denying any such privilege. He talks about the fact that there were email and telephonic communications with Ms. Barnhart and that um, there were mischaracterizations of wrongdoing. So this is the events leading up to the sudden retraction and going through the emails that were sent, the first email, December 24th, which is when that declaration came out in the plaintiff's opposition to the defendant's motion to dismiss. That um, she understood I was Paulson's attorney, she stated, and these emails are attached. So I'm not going to go through all of the attached emails because a lot of them are quoted out in this. Some of them for me are missing context as we get through the the bodies of the emails, it feels like stuff's missing. Those might be the things that are redacted. I'm not going to speculate about that, but it feels like there's a flow of conversation and then chunks missing, but we know some stuff is redacted out. So I'm assuming that that fills in those gaps. I am writing to you because the opposing counsel has been harassing people, including me on Twitter and has brought me up in recent filings. She didn't like it. It seems like she went on to explain, I have done nothing illegal here. And this attorney took it upon himself to dox me again. You know how I feel about this. If it's the wrong person's information, is it a dox? I don't think so. In his latest filing, which has been reviewed on YouTube by numerous people. Hi, I'm people. Um, from that point forward over an 18 day period and more than a hundred emails and two telephone calls, Ms. Barnhart consistently reiterated that from his perspective, she was deeply sympathetic to Ms. Paulson with respect to the treatment she was receiving on social media in this dispute. She understood her relationship with Ms. Paulson to be very limited. We now have gone from like bestie ride or die talk all the time to very limited. Like there is some middle ground here that neither side has come to with regards to how this relationship is. I would love to know what you think about it. Is this, was Lorianne being protective of her friend saying, no, no, we don't have contacts. Did Lorianne switch sides because she was hurt by the declaration of KJ? Did she switch sides to try to help, um, Toddy Westbrook, who she says she doesn't know, there is a shift here from our interactions very limited to no, we talked, she asked me to do those things. You guys are going to have to decide how you feel about it because these are very like divergently opposite perspectives on what this is. But Lorianne only signed one declaration. So she was furious and sometimes despairing at having been abused, uh, abusively outed or doxxed by plaintiff's counsel in a declaration filed in this matter on December 24th in what she viewed as a retribution for what she had said in a Twitter spat between the two of them on November 20th, fair, and a as a public threat to anyone else who would support Ms. Paulson or challenge Mr. Saltz. I don't know if that's accurate, but opinion Again, that anger and despair deepened when Mr. Saltz filed a sworn declaration in which he intested with no reasonable grounds for doing so. And that's, you know, also opinion that he had completed an investigation and had determined that Ms. Barnhart engaged in a concerted effort to hide evidence in this lawsuit. That is regarding, here's footnote 10 just goes back to the declaration. I believe that's regarding the um, deletion of Twitter Here's the thing to remember about attorneys. They rep their side. So everything from Brown's side is going to be in the best possible light for KJ. Everything from Saltzy's side is going to be in the best possible light for Toddy. That is their jobs to argue for their sides. I'm trying to parse through the advocacy to come to where I see this case based on not just what I'm reading here, but everything I've seen go down on social with regard to this case. Cause y'all it's so much.
we get into the doxing again. Again, if it's the wrong person, y'all know how I feel. Let me know how you feel in the comments. If it's the wrong information, is it a dox? I mean, no, it's like an attempted doxing, but I get it. I get why if that had been your information, that would cause you deep concern that, oh, and now where I work is in this thing. And I also get from the plaintiff's perspective, like, yeah, but if you actually work for the state of Washington and you're working with this channel or supporting this channel in the way we think you are, then that shows significant contacts with the state of Washington. Also, that is, that's all in the Fulmer declaration because Kim says in that declaration to the best of my recollection, I went through and found this is who I believe to be this person and I believe her to work here. So that was cleared up in the Lorianne declaration that's now under attack. Plaintiffs located her um, and prepared and filed a declaration from her ostensibly to buttress their argument in favor of personal jurisdiction. I mean, it's not ostensibly. That's what, that's what it was. They're arguing in favor of jurisdiction. But they chose to include in that declaration – Kim Fulmer's very sensitive personal information about Miss Barnhart regarding an eight-year-old criminal charge in an entirely unrelated matter. Yes, that was in Kim Fulmer's declaration. Kim Fulmer talked about her personal safety in that declaration and her investigation into who Lorianne was and why she believed it to be the person she said. This also included a detailed recitation of the totally irrelevant Twitter feud from seven months prior. I, I don't disagree. <laughs> I don't disagree that it's irrelevant to jurisdiction. Um, Kim, it seemed to me when I read it, because I'm like, well, I mean, okay, she's saying that Lori Ann threatened her. Um, it seemed to go to me, for me, to the story of why um, there was a relationship there, why Kim looked into these things. Like the reason I looked into this was because of this, but could it have come out? Yes. Have these documents on both sides had irrelevant shit in it to poke at the other side? Oh, Oh, for sure. For sure. Most of this document also irrelevant, but here we are um, by stating that if they come for me, she has friends in biker gangs. That's the, the biker gangs comments that did not include the threatening tweets. Miss Barnhart was responding to funny enough. This declaration includes a tweet of mine, but not the tweet I was responding to just saying in her declaration. Miss Fulmers testifies that in May, 2020, um, she quote continues to be in reasonable fear for my and my family's personal safety from Miss Barnhart and defendant Paulson. The testimony is not credible. Okay, well, the court's gonna decide that, but sure. I put it this is this attacking the Lorianne declaration or the Kim Fulmer declaration? Because now we're kind of attacking both. This is why it gets into the testimonies not believable, that there had been an apology, that it was not really a threat, it was a joke. The court doesn't give a fuck at this point. The total irrelevance of the biker gang tweet and an eight-year-old criminal charge is understood by the fact that plaintiffs did not rely on those facts in the declaration paragraphs in their response brief. No, Kim Fulmer did. Ms. Barnhart believed quite reasonably under the circumstances that these were included for the purpose of harassing and intimidating her and punishing her for having offended Mr. Saltz in a Twitter exchange with him on November 2020. Um, we all remember that. This is when she was asking if Saltz is a real lawyer. She gets she gets sassy on the Twitter. We talked about that in her declaration that she did get sassy in the Twitter. Um, Saltzy also gets sassy on the Twitter. I mean, that's kind of Twitter. But yes, when I talked about it, well, my video will come up later. We'll get to it. Um, the former declaration also included the complete work email address and direct telephone number of a person plaintiffs believed to be Miss Barnhart. There was no legitimate reason to do this. It seems that they're taking issue that that wasn't redacted. Fair enough um, to take issue with that. Indeed, plaintiffs counsel took great care to redact the contact information of their clients in the exhibits that contained that information. They even took the time to redact the name of the Westbrook's pet from their lease agreement, apparently concerned about the dog's privacy interests. We have SAS. We have achieved full brown SAS at this point. There it is. Well, welcome to the SAS show, Mr. Brown. <laughs> we all know the name of the dog because the dog was put out on Twitter. I didn't even catch because I didn't go through the entire lease agreement that the dog's information was redacted. Um, though the information put up 
from Washington Department of Transportation seemed to me like it came from a public document from a publicly available website. I still understand the concern of not taking out the email address and the phone number. A lease agreement, however, is private and not publicly available. That would be my thought process of are the two the same? But I also completely understand saying, but you could have just left in the first like three digits and taken out the extension. Fair, fair. Um, as Saltz must have expected and intended, those irrelevant but damaging portions of the former declaration were broadcast to massive social media, to the massive social media audience that he played an important role in creating. I, I don't know how, if you guys have seen the massive social media audience that Saltz has created, please clue me in. I am very curious. Um, I think they're alluding to the fact that somehow there is being stuff spun up about this case. Again, it's my perspective of this case, and I'd love to hear from y'all, that the only reason this continues going is because defendant continues bringing things up and it continues bringing stuff back up into the light about this case, as opposed to filing, talk about filing, go on to other cases, wait for another filing. There's so much shenanigans in between that it keeps getting covered because there's stuff to keep covering. Um, and this gets into what Barnhart said in her emails, excuse me, to Brown, um, speculating that thousands of people hate her, that there are videos that will never go away and documents spread over the entire internet that will never go away, that everyone believes what Saltz is saying about me. Over a million people know all about me, um, that her personal information was shared. I imagine that meant the header sheet of the, the conviction that was in that. Um, and then on and on one of those videos by a YouTube channel, created under the name creep show art. Hey, creep show. What up was 17 minutes long and dedicated entirely to abusing Miss Barnhart. I've seen creep shows video. I'll link it down below. I don't think it's abusive. I think it read through the declaration and went, what in the ever loving fuck is this declaration? And again, like we say in all videos, um, these are all allegations. They're allegations, allegations means they haven't been proven. They're just in court documents, folks. It has so far drawn over 200,000 views. And I think that's a link to Creepshow's video and a screenshot of this video. Another published video published by YouTube channel operator, Emily D. Baker. Hey, um, who Mr. Saltz personally promotes. I mean, I know I've been mentioned on his Twitter. I don't, I don't feel like I've been promoted, but if I'm wrong, tell me. And frequently communicates with publicly on his Twitter. Again. There are tweets. Also predictably, yes, it's predictable that I am talking about this case. Yes, yes, we covered this declaration. We sure did. And we're going to cover all the rest of them. It's facts. It's it's predictable. She opined to her very large audience. Hi, very large audience. I mean, I know when I get attacked on Twitter by um, channels that perceive me to be a small channel, I'm told that I'm a small channel, but now I'm a very large audience. Hello, very large audience. And that in putting Ms. Barnhart's 2012 criminal charge into the former declaration, Ms. Saltz was motivated at least in part by a desire to retaliate against Ms. Barnhart. That's not what I said, but you can go watch that video and see if you think that's what I said. That's not what I recall. I said, what I recall I said was this is where there's a dual purpose sometimes to these things and know who you're smacking at on the internet. But also she's a Washington resident and um, that's in Kim Fulmer's declaration. Salts didn't put that into a declaration, but for what Ms. Baker referred to as Ms. Barnhart riling. Yes, I did say that riling the lawyers. I say, don't rile the lawyers. In an earlier tweet, that video is uh, so far drawn over 143,000 views. Don't worry. I'll link it below. I think it's in a footnote too. Ms. Barnhart was especially troubled by the fact that the story is being spread on social media by Baker and others. I'm married. It's Miss, but it's okay. Um, yes, there are others. Where are the others? There are others. There are lots and lots of others. Lots of others. But because they're public documents and lots of others are talking about them. Because public figures. That Ms. Barnhart deserved the deluge of online abuse she was receiving after the filing of the Fulmer Declaration because she had dared to be rude to an attorney. I object to that characterization. Here's why. In all of this, we have never said anyone deserves anything. We've definitely joked about riling the lawyers. 
We've also said you do not hate, we do not harass, we do not go after anyone with regard to anything. We do not co-sign that and it is not okay. But to characterize that the coverage of this case is what caused um, online abuse of Ms. Barnhart after the Fulmer declaration, I don't think it's the coverage. And the coverage, again, is sparked by the action of the party in this case that keeps talking in my opinion. So tell me what you think about that. Um, again, people can be rude all online all day long. You can say legally the things that you can say. It doesn't mean it's speech without consequence, but consequence shouldn't be online harassment. And we have said that. I don't think that's the narrative in any of my videos that, oh, well, this is said, that means it's a hundred percent true. Cause we don't say that. And that means B people should be besmirched or treated badly. Cause we never say that. And that's not true. We say the opposite of it up here on the law nerds channel, but that's okay. There's a narrative. We're not saying narrative again. We're just, we're just not. So Ms. Barnhart said that in an attempt to escape public harassment, she removed herself from social media. If that was going on, I didn't see it. I don't see everything that happens on the Twitters. I get it. She said that she was suffering health effects um, since the filing of the Fulmer declaration and ensuing harassment. That's unfortunate. People should not be harassed. There was a friend that pleaded with Saltsy to leave her alone. That was in one of those declarations and that was discussed in Lori Ann's declaration. So we're going to keep going. There are, um, he sent several direct messages via Twitter to that same friend of Miss Barnhart asking that she deliver a message to Miss Barnhart on his behalf. The following threat, do we see how this is now being characterized? The following threat, quote, Miss Barnhart could quote, this is not a full quote, get in trouble if she did not quote, cooperate with us. So that is screenshotted below. That's in another declaration. I'm going to let you decide if that's a fair characterization of how you take it. That's screenshotted. We'll get back to it. Um, on January 4th, just three days after sending this, do what we say or else. It was interesting that he put it in quotes like it was an actual quote, but it's not a direct quote. It's a characterization. And that's why this is a very argumentative declaration. So I will get into those in those screenshots because we are going to talk about those screenshots specifically. Hopefully you don't hear the background noise. His response to this was to threaten to turn his prosecutorial attention on her. There's screenshots of that tweet um, that seemed out of context to me, but we'll go down and look at those in a minute. There, again, we talked about the hide a connection between defendants. I think that was around the time that her Twitter got deleted, but I don't see, um, there weren't tweets of that. This was in that other declaration that we have a video on, but I am so confused. We're still talking about the fact that she was doxxed, even though we've talked about the fact that it's not her. Moving forward, uh, Mr. Saltz's unfounded sworn determination of Ms. Barnhart's and defendant's guilt was broadcast to a huge social media audience. Again, attaches exhibit C, screenshots from my video. I like that the coverage is in quotes. Oh, okay. Um, and then Saltz's sworn but groundless determination that Barnhart conspired with defendants to hide evidence. I don't know if that's the word that was used, but okay, we're going to still cover it. So, you know, we're going to still cover it. Barnhart eventually appeared to surrender. So this is really where they are arguing that the social media coverage of the case somehow pressured Lori Ann to change her position. And that's why she signed a sworn declaration from someone from plaintiff's side or with Salty instead of with Mr. Brown. Uh, both attorneys wanted her to sign a declaration to support their side. How do you guys feel about that shift from one to the other? Again, I thought it was after she read what KJ said about her. That's how this played out when I read through it, it was like, oh, we're not even really friends. And then she filed it saying, no, we actually were friends. But who knows at this point? Um, this gets into Brown saying what he did, trying to um, reassure her, properly so, that she had done nothing wrong. Because again, being a dick on Twitter on occasion is not like a crime. It's 
yes, if there's a connection between the two and jurisdiction is a thing and you live in Washington, I can see why plaintiffs would want to see the DMs there. And there was more going on, more context going on on Twitter with that to my memory. But also I can see why somebody might be freaked out about that. And the other side's attorney, Brown, rightfully saying, you didn't do anything wrong. Like if they get a subpoena for your conversations with KJ, then they will. You know why? Because that's going to come up in discovery anyway, because KJ stuff is subject to discovery. And Lorianne does live in Washington and it is proper to see connections to Washington. And I think he's right in telling her repeatedly, you haven't done anything wrong. Let's keep going. That's why we're, we're scooching past it. He says, I now understand that on January 12th, Ms. Barnhart contacted plaintiff's counsel. And again, this seemed to be her choice. It seems from what I'm reading from Brown's declaration that she chose to reach out to him. Also, what's up 6,500 law nerds? How are you? If you're not um, a subscriber here, go ahead and do that. That would super help when I am, you know, sitting here reading all of these documents, knowing that you all are enjoying coverage of this case does help. Oh, and you can thumbs up the video so other people can see it. We'll see what happens. She also gave them her emails with me, Brown says, gave them access to all of her social media accounts, including passwords. This, of course, is much more access to her personal life than they would have enjoyed after they had served their subpoena and proceeded in that manner. I mean, if she wanted to do it, in her declaration, it said, I just wanted to be done with this. The I didn't see an email in this where she said that she said it in her declaration. So I don't know if this is every single email. It doesn't quite clearly state if it's every single email or just most of the emails. Um, and there's of course, no way for us to know that, but it, in her declaration, she seemed to indicate that she wanted to just whatever, whatever, whatever salty. If you want to see my DMS fine, see them. I don't care. And that was in her declaration, but I didn't see anything to that nature in these emails when I went through them the first time. The next day, plaintiffs filed the second declaration, having secured what he wanted from Ms. Bernhardt. That evening, Mr. Saltz, the person she blamed for leading a campaign of harassment against her, took to Twitter to thank Ms. Bernhardt and called her a class act. We all remember that tweet. Um, this presumably was what Mr. Saltz meant. Again, who says presumably in a declaration? Like, this is argumentative. It's just, this is just, just pure speculation at this point. This isn't a motion. This is a declaration. This is pure speculation for the purpose of saying you slapped at me in, in Lori Ann's declaration. So here we go. Slap back. But also there are page limits. Okay. The, the, I really just, we're going to need a determination on jurisdiction so we can be done with this kind of back and forth sniping. But if this is already what we're seeing now, I can imagine how expensive discovery is going to be because this is going to continue to happen, which is why early on when you take pot shots at each other, this has just gone off the rails. Again, when you just, when everybody just like, and you let the court filings happen, they just happen. Like the Anna Nicole Smith case with Jeffree Star, we've talked about it what once because it was filed and then they filed another motion with the court saying, hey, we're going to try to mediate this. We'll be back when we need you. And nobody else, nothing else because that's it. Okay, motion format. The false assertions in the second declaration, Ms. Barnhart reviewed, suggested change to, changes to and was very eager to sign. Okay, look, she didn't sign it. She changed her mind. You can tell me all day long what's in it, but she never signed it. You can tell me all day long what's in her emails. But when push came to shove, she didn't sign the declaration. And we don't know why. She says in her signed declaration, she didn't feel comfortable with it. So that's what she signed. That's kind of the default of what we're going with. They disagree. They think she didn't sign it because she was there implying um, harassed into doing something different. But again, it seems that she reached out to Saltzy based on her declaration. So who knows? But all of this um, isn't really relevant. So we're going to get into the emails in a sec. The emails prove Ms. Barnhart was exceedingly eager to sign the first declaration. Well, until she wasn't, though. <laughs> like, until she wasn't. Shortly after that, we talked on the telephone for 39 minutes. By the way, these phone calls are later called 
extensive phone calls. Maybe it's just me and I'm a long talker. 39 minutes doesn't feel like a long phone call to me. Let me know what you think. Um, and then Ms. Barnhart pr proceeded to prepare without any involvement from me and sent me a 1500 word statement regarding her very limited relationship with defendant Paulson, the abuse and harassment she had suffered since plaintiffs filed the former declaration. And again, no besmirgement to Lori Ann. That shouldn't have happened. Um, but even before this lawsuit was filed from everything I've seen, the environment with regard to KJ's channel and, and what was going on on Twitter was hostile before any of this happened. So I don't know how much of that was predating this declaration or if the declaration just sparked off a wave of like a Lorianne hate train. I don't know. It seemed like there is context there before this lawsuit ever occurred. But again, I didn't, I was not familiar with any of these parties except Toddy Westbrook before this was filed. There's more history there is all I'm saying. On January 6, 2021, I exchanged three drafts of the first declaration with Ms. Barnhart, as well as a large number of emails. They're attached. One day we exchanged 53 emails. At that point, it's like, can we just, can I call you? <laughs> just saying. I admonished her to read the drafts carefully, not attest to anything just because I had included it. Fair and proper. Ms. Barnhart reviewed these drafts carefully, suggested changes, and was eager. Again, they've said eager 9,000 times. She still didn't sign it. Um, no matter how eager she was. Then this gets into the fact that Brown says he decided not to have her file the declaration. At approximately 6.30 p.m., I decided not to file that declaration that evening and communicated that to Ms. Barnhart. I don't know why this decision was made. He doesn't really dive into it more, but they filed their response. So the opposition by Plano was filed. Then afterwards, there was a precipe filed with more information. After the precipe was filed, it seemed that counsel had agreed to more time for um, the, the uh, declaration to be filed for, not the declaration, the reply to the opposition to be filed for defense. It was in their discovery motion that was filed with the court. And so there was more time. We were all, we up, all the law nerds up in here were caught off guard by this going, oh, they filed this really quick. They had more time. So it it seemed that that was filed quickly with the, the declaration of KJ. And that's the declaration where it's like, she's not my friend. Um, we don't really have any contact at all. So there was more time there. It's not that they were up against deadline, just so that part of that is clear. Um, all right. So let's keep it. Let's keep rolling. The accusation that I plan to make changes to the first declaration without Smith, Smith without Miss Barnhart's express approval is deliberately misleading. So this is, taking issue with the fact Brown is saying that Saltsy through Barnhart's declaration said that um, she was uncomfortable with the fact that she would just sign a page and then allow it to be changed. There's an email there that says, um, of course, I will not make any changes without you reviewing them. We all we all took issue with the fact here on the channel that it was like, oh, you want me to just sign a declaration page and then make changes later? That's That would not be appropriate. But we also said we don't have the communications. We don't know exactly what was said. We know Miss Lorianne's interpretation of what was said. And so Brown is saying, no. Um, I said in an email, of course, I will not make any changes without you reviewing them. So Take that with what you will. Further, the suggestion that Ms. Barnhart was uncomfortable with this is belied by her conduct after receiving the email. She said nothing about any discomfort. But at some point, it seems that she cut off communication based on her own declaration. So again, there are two sides of this story being told. The court is going to have to parse them. There is the sworn declaration. There are the emails leading up to the defense drafting a declaration and then not signing it. Ms. Barnhart's concern about the first declaration unfair me, unfairly maligning Salt is contradicted by her eagerness to sign it and her perfectly consistent descriptions of Salt's. Um, yeah, it, it really seems she doesn't like him at all. <laughs> so 
so it seems in these emails that she doesn't like him at all. And it seems that way on, on Twitter. And even in a screenshot that was included, she then stated differently in a declaration, but it definitely seemed that she did not have uh, any loss of good feelings for Saltsy. She talked about, according to Brown, that his behavior was abusive. Um, and you guys have seen the stuff in the other declaration, so you can decide. She referred to him as that slimy lawyer. She referred to him as harassing, pompous, arrogant. I mean, let's just, most lawyers, let's just put that out there. Most lawyers, most lawyers, both pompous and arrogant. The creep and creepy stalking attorney. Okay. Indeed, two days after the date on which she now claims she was uncomfortable, the first declaration uncomfortable signing the first declaration because it unfairly maligned salt barnhard wrote the following to me this man referring to salts 68 um i'm keep saying why is this emotion dressed as a declaration quote i am disgusted that this man thinks it's okay to stalk harass and accuse me of committing crimes with zero proof of anything if you all see the tweets that she's referring to um i'm curious i think they're attached but i'm not sure I've had personal information shared about me, videos made berating me. Again, I, d I, I don't think any of the videos were berating, but clearly they were taken that way. Fearful for my kids and my grandkids' safety. Nobody has the right to threaten me with legal action, as this man has done with his pompous and arrogant attitude. He's using me as an example. He's proud of it, too. She blamed his filing of the Fulmer Declaration his filing of his own declaration falsely accusing her of conspiring to hide evidence and his conduct towards her on social media for causing her anxiety, fear for her safety and her families and more. Third, and this goes into specific contradictions in the declaration where it said Saltz has not threatened me. And there were um, screenshots in that declaration and then in Saltz's declaration regarding that. We're getting into the the um, favorite lemon lime Waterloo. Cause it is time. We've been talking for like an hour and 10 minutes to all of you up here, all 6,500 of you. Hello friends. There's so much more. Um, Oh, it made a noise. Hey, what's up? What's up? Um, eight, 80,300 lawnards. It, it made a little ding. It was very exciting. I was hoping to turn it over last night. It didn't. It's totally fine. We're moving on. Um, Miss Saltz sent to her through an intermediary. Again, through an intermediary is not to her. I understand what they're saying. Ugh. Then they get into all of these different emails. More threats directed at me. Nobody has the right to threaten me with legal action. Is the threat of legal action the threat to subpoena? Because it's... I mean, it is an order of the court, but it's not a legal action. It's a subpoena. So I can understand, though, why, if you're not familiar with law, you might not understand that a subpoena is not a legal action. It's a subpoena, which is different. It's like, hey, preserve this or provide this or we're having Twitter provide this. But it's not the same as being involved in a legal action per se. But again, I can understand the confusion, especially when shit is stressful. January 11th, January 11th, there's quite a lot of this. This is reiterating the same thing that was above. Um, she was anything, they're saying she was anything but uncomfortable with these statements or attesting to them under oath. I mean, until she wasn't. I did not encourage Ms. Barnhart to file bar grievances against Mr. Saltz, nor did I instruct her to do so. The second declaration alleges that I tried to encourage Ms. Barnhart to file state bar complaints against Saltz and instructed her how to do it. This is simply false. And there's an email attached where he says, this is one of the things that you can do. She was upset over having highly sensitive personal information publicly exposed in the former declaration. I'm assuming that refers to the cover sheet with regard to a um, filed criminal case. The paragraph that plaintiffs characterize here, but do not provide to the court is as follows. So this is out of, this looks like a snippet of an email. Unfortunately, I don't know if there's much we can do about it. The full email's below. Other than bring it to the court's attention and object to it on your behalf, there is an attorney ethics rule saying a lawyer cannot use the legal system to harass or intimidate. This filing seems to violate that rule. Um, I mean, I guess I can, I don't agree, but I can see where they're saying, because generally not using the legal system to harass or intimidate is not 
filing things to quiet people, threatening lawsuits to quiet people and things like that, not putting things in um, court documents, though I could see why they would want to put that in here. This seems to be a consistent thing from that side. And it seems to be consistently brought up on Twitter. Like there, there are ethics violations. There is this, there is that. So there is a consistent conversation happening around that. So take it as, you know, with a grain of salt as what you will, you can sign a statement that we can file. If you'd like explaining what the filing has done to you and your family, you can also consider filing a complaint with the bar associations of Washington and California. That process moves very slowly. True. So it would not give you any quick relief. Also true and fair. So was that mischaracterized? And have we seen things mischaracterized on both sides of this? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Let me know what you think. Because you guys have the video with the other declaration. Does that encourage it? Is that just saying this is what you can consider doing? Again, both sides being advocates for their own side. How do you take it? There's so much on both. There's so much on both sides. But it feels like Brown saying this doesn't read as encouragement. This just reads as this is an option. If there are other emails, I don't know. This directs to this specific email. This specific email doesn't seem to be instructing someone how to do so. I believe this is to, uh, to be reasonable and truthful information. There's no encouragement here to file a bar grievance or instruction how to do so. Indeed, the last set sentence is discouragement. I mean, the process moves slow. Perhaps it is, or it's just awareness. <sighs> We're still in this. Ms. Paulson did not tell Ms. Barnhart not to contact Mr. Saltz and contact me instead. This is a blatant, they're saying, misrepresentation of the fact. You can speak to my attorney if you'd like is an offer. Um, Ms. Barnhart repeatedly confirmed that her account of her relationship with Mr. With Ms. Paulson was perfectly consistent with Ms. Paulson's. So they're saying, again, everyone was on board with this was a a small relationship and then it flipped. And now it was, we have all this communication. Y'all let me know what you think about that. Um, but Miss Barnhart's previous communications told me exactly the opposite of this. Oh, I got to back up because this is solid SAS. We like it. Plaintiff's counsel clearly drafted this the, again. Again, that's how that, that's how that works. You generally get the statements you take in the statements of a, of a person who's making a declaration. And then you say, this is how it's written legally. Is this correct? Read everything carefully, verify everything. If something doesn't sound right, if it's not correct, if it misstates anything, we need to correct it. But yes, attorneys generally draft those. There is nothing strange there at all. So yes, plaintiff's counsel clearly drafted this probably for Ms. Barnhart to sign in an attempt to show a connection between defendants and Washington state because Ms. Barnhart is a resident of the state of Washington. I think that's an accurate recitation, but Ms. Barnhart's previous communications told me exactly the opposite of this television script enforcer fantasy, solid, solid sass. <laughs> I like it. It's not a murderous conspiracy, but, but murderous conspiracy was given to us by the way, by the defense in the motion to dismiss. It is not building monuments to the gods of speculation, but I like television script enforcer fantasy. We're adding it to the lexicon. We're rolling with it. In my first email to Ms. Barnhart, I explained that the Washington connection was the reason plaintiff's counsel targeted her for the doxing. I mean, again with the doxing, but it is the reason she's been contacted because we're still in a motion for jurisdiction. Jesus fucking God, there's still jurisdiction here. Do we have jurisdiction? Like, can we just decide jurisdiction? And then her response was an emphatic. Katie has never asked me to do any, uh, asked me to do anything for her. We tweeted on occasion, but she never instructed me to do anything, nor would I. Is that, is that KJ's truth? Is that Lorianne's truth? Or is that Lorianne protecting her friend and then getting burned? And the other one's the truth. You guys are going to have to decide. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Again, plaintiff's counsel publicly bragged that they read these emails before they prepared the second declaration. That's attached. You can tell me if you would characterize it that way. Um, this is the this is the only part for me that goes to jurisdiction, which is why I said at least this is relevant to jurisdiction. We're how many pages in are we? 18 pages in? 18 pages in, and we get we have 
conversation of jurisdiction on page 18. Another glaring area of contradiction between Ms. Barnhart's own prior statement and the second declaration is her testimony that during the period of their interactions online, Ms. Paulson knew she was a res she resided in Washington. Indeed, Ms. Barnhart now testifies that she frequently disclosed this to defendants. But Ms. Barnhart emphatically confirmed to me in our first conversation there was no reason for Ms. Paulson to have known where she lived. And then Ms. Barnhart proceeded to review, edit, and repeatedly express her eagerness to sign the first declaration. I'm going to have to do a control F search for how many times eager is said, which I state, I have, um, which stated, quote, I have no reason to believe Ms. Paulson knew which state I lived in until recently. Again, those are very different characterizations. I will say that not only is Ms. Paulson in this, but also her company. So if her company had knowledge, companies aren't presumed to have forgotten. So if it's written somewhere, if it was said somewhere, companies are presumed to remember, but that is a point we've gotten into in other videos. So another example of plaintiff's disregard for the truth in Ms. Barnhart's sworn assertion is that she stopped supporting defendants in August, 2020, because she didn't like the toxic environment Ms. Paulson was creating with her content. Here again, her statements to me orally and in emails that plaintiffs withheld again, um, told exactly the opposite story. In a phone call and several emails, Barnhart explained that she stopped supporting Paulson's channel because of the harassment she received from Paulson's online enemies, including Kim Fulmer, who attacked Barnhart because she continued to support Ms. Paulson's channel. And this is a personal statement from January 5th saying, there are so many Twitter and YouTube trolls and sock accounts that would just follow me around because I supported KJ. I tried to reason with them, but there's no reasoning with them. I got, it got so bad that I stopped supporting KJ. And then all the trolls were my best friends. They wanted me to join their hate groups and to troll KJ. There is definitely a toxic environment around all of that. Um, and that, that has nothing to do with jurisdiction in this motion at all. <sighs> Continuing on, this is again, kind of line by line through, this is what we say is not true. This is what we say is true. This is our version of the facts. This is their version of the facts. They break down Miss Paulson's declaration. I have had very limited interactions with Miss Barnhart. Do not know her well. Do not consider her to be a friend at all, let alone my best friend. That was the under the bus statement in the declaration. And then Miss Barnhart's first declaration apparently said, Miss Paulson and I have never been friends and have very little direct content. I understand that she might have referred to me as her best friend when I sent a comment during one of her videos. This was obviously not meant literally. Isn't this is obviously not meant literally the exact same words from the KJ declaration. I think it is based on a very limited nature of my interactions with Miss Paulson. So one of these, one of these sides from Lorianne can't be true. Like both of these things can't be true at the same time. But if the court is going to rely on um, factual differences, again, in this type of motion, it waits to plain enough. I think this is more about clearing their side of the story on social than necessarily convincing the court at this point. My opinion. Um, again, two long telephone conversations, but he said one was 39 minutes and one was 17 minutes. So you tell me if you consider that a long phone conversation or not. There is, this is mostly speculative. So we're going to keep going to get to the emails. Um, this gets into the Christmas statement. Lorianne says the, uh, Lorianne had said they purposely did the late Christmas Eve because they knew nothing could get done about it until the following Monday. They laughed and said, Merry Christmas. So that's Lorianne emailing Brown saying, you know, basically why are they fucking with all of us on Christmas Eve dropping this declaration? She felt you know, personally, some kind of way, because then this Fulmer declarations out there, it's over Christmas. I get it. Um, I think we all were like, Oh, it's Christmas Eve. <laughs> and here we are. But that was the filing deadline in the rush of what was the afternoon of the filing deadlines for defendants reply. It did not occur to me to correct Miss Barnhart as to this detail and explain that the timing was not intentional. In my response, I simply said the Christmas Eve timing of this is especially nice, right? I feel like he's gassing her up. He's telling the court that he's not okay. It's irrelevant either way. 
um, you're allowed to have a collegial relationship with someone who's going to be a witness. But I think plaintiff said that it was taken as um, more than him gassing her up. But yes, it's, it's him going along with what she said and being like, yeah, right. Fuck them. <laughs> Which I can understand given everything that they're laying out that you want, you want the people on your side to be on your side. That's how this works. It's an adversarial process. Okay. The court should reject plaintiff's transparent attempt to blame me and Ms. Barnhart for their reckless publication of the contact information for the wrong Lorianne Barnhart, though there is no reason that that is, that that matters. Really? They filed the Lorianne declaration to clear it up. Um, she still lives in the state of Washington. I think this goes to the fact that in the Lorianne declaration, it talks about the fact that they wanted, she wanted this to be fixed faster. And it's in that declaration. Like we, she seemed very concerned based on that declaration about that information being wrong. And it comes up in the, um, emails here. Lori Ann does ask quite a lot in all of these emails. What about the other Lori Ann? What has happened? Has she been contacted? Like it does seem to me genuinely from these emails and from the other declaration that she was concerned that whatever she had been involved with on Twitter, whatever um, conversations had been had, whatever sniping at other people had been had, didn't fall back onto the wrong person because now where they worked and their work email and phone was out there. That seems to be the consistent thread through all of these. The rest of the facts on either side are very different from both sides' tellings. But that thread of this seems consistent to me that the concern was make sure that this other person um, doesn't receive any hate or harassment because of all of this other context. That seems to be the one consistent point through all of this. What is in here that we didn't know before is that Brown says that he contacted the other Lorianne at DOT to address the mix up. He contacted the department and got moved up to the assistant attorney general in charge of that department. So it does look like behind the scenes, he was trying to follow that up. And I asked, did Lorianne know? Because again, these are my thoughts as I'm reading through it. And on the next page, he's like, he let her know that. That's not clear at all in her declaration with Salts that she knew that that was happening. It hadn't been cleared up in court. Brown is saying that it was he was making efforts to clear it up behind the scenes. Um, Lorianne did not have any of that in her declaration. And that's why he's saying Ms. Barnhart now accuses me of failing to inform Salts of his mistake in this regard. That was in there. It doesn't seem that Brown ever from this notified the other side, hey, you've got it wrong in your declaration. But it does seem that he was taking actions behind the scenes. So make of it what you will. It says that he has not corrected the error, but the new declaration corrects it. So I don't know if he's asking or saying that they should have had the court retract it in some way. I don't know. But it was cleared up in that Lori Ann declaration and in, I believe, Salt's declaration, but, but Brown says, I saw little to be gained by my reporting the same information indirectly that he had already directly from the source talking about the fact that Lorianne had apparently DM'd him saying, you know, you doxed me or it's not me. Those screenshots were in the other motion. And I don't recall if they're down here too. Um, Indeed, prior to January 6th, Ms. Barnhart expressed ambivalence about filing a declaration that would be perceived as supporting Ms. Paulson in the lawsuit. This is the only time they really talk about the fact that there was hesitation here. The rest of this not motion, we're still in a declaration, says that she was eager to do it, that she was ready to do it, that she wanted to do it. This is the only sentence in this that says there was ambivalence about it because she didn't want to be perceived as supporting Ms. Paulson. And then they characterize that as that's the reason that we included the second and final draft, a statement that Ms. Barnhart was not supporting Ms. Paulson on this side of dispute, but only wanted to point out the abusive nature of the Fulmer declaration and set the record straight with regard to her relationship with Ms. Paulson. But it seemed to me from the emails I read that her goal was to make sure to undo the targeting at the other Washington Lorianne, and that isn't stated here, but that was my reading of it. Um, 
Another email from me to her that day reiterates they are working very hard to try to paint you two as a team, and that's not good for either of you. Agreed, because jurisdiction, if you have an agent in the state of Washington, it's easier for the court to find jurisdiction. So yes, the plaintiff side is saying, you guys have agency together. And the defense side is saying, nope, nope, no contacts with Washington, because it's still a jurisdiction motion. Oof. Uh, um we're going to keep going. I made a note down here that if, because the emails continuing with Lorianne seem to continue to ask about the other Lorianne and had other or Lorianne been notified. So if Brown had addressed it and told her it was being addressed, she seemed continuously concerned about it, which struck me as a disconnect. You guys make of it what you will as we go through this, but it struck me as a disconnect where I'm like, oh, if he told her he was working on it, why is there still this disconnect? And that might lend to the fact that she really wanted to address it or to the fact that she didn't understand it was being addressed. I don't know. Um, it is remarkable that plaintiffs would attempt to shift blame to me, Brown, for this incident and more outrageous that they apparently convinced Ms. Barnhart to take blame, to take the blame herself. Again, it's all that it's just, it's, it's speculative, like apparently is speculative. It's argumentative, but it's a declaration. This is all supposed to be personal knowledge. This isn't based on personal knowledge. This is all argument. It's not based on personal knowledge. Okay, we're almost through and we're getting to the emails. Because because we got to murderous. We got back to murderous. Murderous is a word the defense has used multiple times. Here it is. Um, this is a very long sentence. Indeed, as of this date, neither plaintiffs nor Ms. Fulmer have corrected this filing, leaving on the record the contact information of a woman who has nothing to do with this case. Let me know if you think they corrected it in the Lorianne Declaration. Curious your thoughts. And leaving that information connected to a criminal charge that is not hers, as well as salacious allegations that she, she associates with murderous biker gangs and poses a danger to the safety of others. So the former declaration doesn't say murderous to the best of my knowledge. Um, you could go watch those videos on it. Creep show's got a video on it. The, it. It talked about the biker gangs. It talked about Lorianne tweeting about the biker gangs, but murderous seems to be a word um, only used in these by defense. Cause we did have murderous conspiracy and we're tracking it. Now we're tracking the use of the word murderous in this. If you have forgotten, it's a defamation case over shit that was said in videos, in an article, and on Twitter. This is not a case about biker gangs or murderous conspiracies or James Charles or Jeffree Star or Shane Dawson. It's about whether these statements were said, and we have gotten so far afield that we've we've said salts a lot. We've said Tati Westbrook almost none in this whole thing. So... Uh, Ms. Barnhart appeared to feel overwhelmed at the prospect of responding to a subpoena. And then this gets into whether Twitter would be subpoenaed if, if connections had been deleted in the video where I talk about this, I bring up, there were screenshots in that filing showing that there were DMS um, with Lorianne. There was like a list of people that were DM'd in a screenshot that was up on KJ screen on, I think that December 29th video, but it could have been a slightly different timing of the video and so it showed that there were conversations. And then if memory serves, Lorianne's Twitter went down right as they were trying, they plaintiffs trying to establish this connection with Washington. And so when it was filed to me, it read like, Hey, we need this subpoena. This is from these emails because we're trying to show this Washington connection. And if there's DMS, they're talking about this stuff, then we need to know how connected you are to the state of Washington. And then Lori Ann's declaration came out and said, oh yeah, I did all kinds of stuff. I was an agent. And they're coming out and saying, uh, yeah, Lori Ann would never have said that because um, we have all these emails indicating she wouldn't have said that. And then this is just speculative at the end. And then this is the end of the declaration. Holy sweet baby Jesus, 26 pages. And now we get into the exhibits, the receipts. And that's where we get into the rest of this 200 pages. We're not going receipt by receipt. We're just going to, we're going to pick on some of the highlights and then we're going to move forward. And I don't mean pick on like pick on. We're just going to pick some of the highlights. First up Twitter. Um, this is a reply to something. The reply's not there. It says it's a reply. 
We spoke to Lorianne for 11 hours, two witnesses on the line, and wrote down everything she said. We reviewed her emails and quoted them. We drafted the declaration with her. We sent it to her and read every word with her and verified each sentence. Then she signed it. I don't know what this is responding to. It's responding to something around January 15th. We can go pull up Twitter later if we have time. I want to get to your questions. But I think that's what he said about plaintiffs bragging that he read the emails. It said, we reviewed her emails. What do you think? I want to see the comments. My comments are back on so I can see you guys as we get into this, um, the receipts here. Tell me if you think that that's bragging. I missed a few super chats. Hello, Shannon. Literally just woke up, sent you a text and realized you were live. Hey girl, <laughs> we've, we've chatted about you a little bit. Um, Catherine said, many thanks is long overdue. Try a nice pulley fume. It's sublime. I will figure out what that is and try it. Um, not that Karen said, Perry Mason, your honor, I object. It's irrelevant, incompetent, and incomplete or immaterial. That's kind of where we're at with this. We're going to keep going. Exhibit B, email. There are a lot of this. This is the December 24th. It looks like the contemporaneous, like I'm seeing all these videos being made about me. I am uh, being harassed on Twitter. I'm being brought up in filings. I'm being doxxed. That's what that is. Um, back and forth emails. This is from December 24th. Um, this is from Brown. Hi, Lori. What the Westbrooks did to you with this filing is shameful. The only legitimate, we love the quotes, the only legitimate point they could have been trying to make is that Katie has some connection with the person who lives in Washington. Yes. From all the filings, that's exactly what's happening. Look, KJ said in her declaration, this is why words matter. KJ said in her declaration, I don't have any subscribers and any viewers in Washington, which flung the doors wide open for plaintiffs to go, well, here's one and here's another one and here's another one. And wait, there's another one. And oh, look, this one's in your DMs. That's why it came up. <sighs> Yes, I have a lightsaber. Yes, it's Gerard Cosmetics. Yes, there's a code. So the original declaration of KJ, in my opinion, with, to my knowledge, I don't have any subscribers and I don't have any viewers in Washington, flings the door open for plaintiff to say this, 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 this. But the problem with that is the, to my knowledge, if you have a way to have knowledge and just ignore it. Like if you can go look in your analytics, um, if you can go look in your analytics to my knowledge, doesn't cover you saying no, it, it, that's not how that works to my knowledge means there is no way for me to know. There is no way for me to know if that's true or not. Not, I just didn't look at my analytics <sighs> continuing on. Um, this, I think, is him spinning her up and agreeing with her. Again, you want witnesses on your side. I totally get it. Um, he's saying that they were wrong. This could have been done without exposing your full name or email address or phone number. Again, indicating that that's her, even though she later says it's not her. Um, so spinning her up, it seems clear to me the only purpose was to harass and intimidate you and anyone else who dares to say anything in support of Katie. Unfortunately, I don't know if there's much we can do. And then this is the statement that was above earlier. So it's fanning her up and saying, I agree with you. They're terrible. Understood. And then saying, this is what you can kind of do about it. You can consider these things. These are screenshots that aren't pulled out big. Um, this felt random to me. It felt like there was other emails to this thread, but I don't know if there are. The emails change consistently throughout the thing. But this is like, Katie has never asked me to do anything for her. We tweeted on occasion. She never instructed me to do anything, nor would I. I still have no clue who Tati is. Um, I posted a link to Saltz's firm because he was soliciting information on Twitter. He didn't have a verified account. Yeah, they don't just verify you because you're a lawyer on Twitter. You have to like be fancy enough. I still don't know how it works. And I did not want to send someone, I did not want someone to send legal documents through Twitter. So that pissed him and his trolls off. I think it's funny. They think Doc uh, Saltzy has trolls, but... I think it's kind of funny. Everybody's a troll at this point. They doxed me on Twitter, which I didn't see. He was a part of the thread. It's a big mess. Some of the information they put in the lawsuit is incorrect. There it is, December 24th, 5 p.m. And I hope the other lawyer, Lori, isn't being harassed. It just seems that there was other conversation here. Um, this 
talks about me. <laughs> also, I'm pretty sure Emily Baker and Michael Saltz were colleagues at one time. No, we weren't. We've talked about that on that channel, this channel, that channel, this channel. We weren't. We both were district attorneys, not at the same time. But I do believe he appeared in the court where I was a law clerk um, when I was a research attorney. But no, we weren't colleagues. So, and the sock account, I'm freaking racking. Don't know if that's a sock account because, I mean, we've had chats up here in the chat, but okay, perception um, or whatever I think is working with them. No, we're, no, we're not. All, no, we're just like literally just reading court documents. There's no, there's no working with anyone. It's like documents are filed. And then we talk about documents. People say things sassy on Twitter. And then sometimes I say things that are sassy back. Okay, we're just we're just gonna keep going. We're just gonna keep it moving. So these are screenshots I found on Reddit. Merry Christmas. Um this was December 25th. This stuff was in her declaration. Um I just read through the documents, they're doxing the wrong person. Again, if it's the wrong person, they're not connecting information that's not known publicly to another person, but I get why it is perceived that way. We're going to keep moving on. Um, isn't this about Tati and her harassment? What they've done is terrible. They're spreading the declaration all over the internet, YouTube, Twitter, et cetera. The information's not being blocked out. It's a court document. I redacted parts of it. That thing. Um, this is just, a, a, I think an appropriate question. Have you seen an increase in harassment? Then it continues on. Um, I've been laying low. My Twitter is private. All kinds of trolls sending me follower requests. Um, this again is a reply. I don't know what it's replying to. This is the profile picture we know to be Lori Ann. So I don't know. But she said the creep posted this, which is why it is in here. Because again, these are just lawyers now smacking at one another in court. But it's going to get expensive to do so. Um I think Emily and a few of the trolls work together. I'm no, nope, nope. That's not how that works. That's not how any of this works. Um, I, the law nerds are civil. We are very civil here in the law nerd space. I don't know who trolls are and we just read court documents up on the YouTube and everybody's very pressed about it. So this is their screenshots that were there that are admitted. This is them talking clearly about more stuff that's going on on Twitter. I want to get to emails or to your questions in just a second. Um, this is talking about other stuff. There are some redacted things, which means, and I wanted to get to these for sure, redacted things, meaning that they were either, um, I think they were submitted to the court or there was an email in the chain missing. So saying, hey, this is page 11 on a printout, page 12 is redacted and provided to the court under seal or redacted because it doesn't um, it doesn't fit in here. So that's what redacted means. Um, I spoke with Salts. They're planning to subpoena your Twitter. Uh, they said that. So it looks like she learned of that from Michael Brown telling her that. So she's learning that her Twitter is going to be subpoenaed from him relaying to it. So she, it seems to me from this, he was telling her that. So if that's what her basis of they're going to rope me into litigation is, then that was told to her um, here. And they're kind of joking about it in email. Again, I, that's what it is. They're planning on subpoenaing your Twitter account because um, they see that you're, that you closed your account and they think there might've been evidence there about your connection to Katie. Yeah, based on the screenshots of the DMs is what I'm going on with that because that was in one of the other declarations. I did not disclose that you and I are in touch. Saltz even complained to me that you threatened him via DM. So there's that. Um, and that's in the other declaration. There's screenshots of that. This seemed to have context missing, but it might have had to do with this redacted uh, declaration or that email, redacted email. Um, maybe if it, this is December 30th, maybe it would be easier if I just went and met with him myself. He can see me face to face. I'm not a threat. So at this point, it looks like she's trying to say, Hey, can I have nothing to hide? Can we just be done with this? Can we just be done with this? 
Um, and then she was saying it's toxic. I've got enough issues. I don't want to talk to anyone in the community anymore. So there are discussions in this already that it's toxic. So the words from the other declaration to me aren't coming out of anywhere or aren't coming out of nowhere. Um, I understand the impulse, but you need to understand the type of person he is. That just reads to me as Brown discouraging her from communicating with salts. Again, it is what it is. Um, talking about these, the next couple talk about the subpoena. Um, I won't cave on them. I won't turn on Katie. She has done nothing wrong. I always express that I stand alone. So again, when I was reading this email, I was like, is she fulfilling the ride or die for Katie? Or is she, is this the truth? Is this the, is this ride or die Lorian being like, I'm defending a creator or is this, um, is this different? So I don't know. I don't know. And I see you guys in the chat asking, yes, there are multiple different email addresses over this thing. And the email addresses keep changing in all of this. So she's saying, for all I care, they can look at my internet activities. They won't find anything. The only thing I wanted to keep private, they've spread all over the internet. I don't know what that's referring to. So look at what they've done to me and the other Lorianne. So I'm aware that they're baiting both me and Katie. I have follow instructions from law enforcement and that's kind of going in on that. And again, saying I, um, I understand things are getting really intense right now and they will be filing another statement saying I threatened the creepy stalking attorney. I don't know where some of this is coming from and you guys might have more context for it that have seen stuff go down on Twitter. I don't know where all that's coming from, but uh, once again, these are Lorianne's feelings and observations and opinions put into email. This is from December 31st. Wouldn't they need to mail me a subpoena? So this is going into the subpoena. Are they going to subpoena Michael Brown properly saying you've not been accused of any crime or wrongdoing. They're just coming after you to build their case against Katie. Yes. Cause we're still in a jurisdiction motion. If they subpoena you in Twitter, all you and Twitter will have to do is give them whatever communications you had with Katie, which he's saying, which aren't many. I don't know if he's seen them to know that or if he's encouraging that that's what it is. We don't know. It's just, which aren't many. I'm So it is what it is. If he's seen them, then he would know that, is, which is how it reads to me. Uh, Saltz filed a long paper today with the court. That's Monday the 4th um, about your alleged connections to Katie. It's attached. Let me know. And this gets into the timing up until the filing of the she's not even my friend thing. So let me get to that. Oh, me, me. Let me get to me. Hold on. Let me get to me. Um, trying to fuck with lawyers on Twitter never goes well, but I love watching it unfold. This is from November 4th, 2020. Y'all can pull up my Twitter from November 4th. This has literally nothing to do with Lorianne. I'm just... This has nothing to do with Lorianne. This this only has to do with this only has to do with the fact that I was also being threatened along with a lot of the drama channels of we're gonna sue. You know, KJ was saying I'm gonna sue Emily. She needs to shut up. I'm going to you know cease and desist talking about this case. There was a period of time there in early November where myself. Creep show. This was right before Creep Show got doxxed. Myself, Creep Show, Nick Schneider, Dustin Daly, and others. It was like, if they don't stop talking, there's going to be cease and desist. There were videos, and all of that stuff was going on. And this was a response to another account talking about the fact that somebody was saying that they were going to send me a cease and desist or sue me um, <laughs> because um because of this. So it had literally nothing to do with Lorianne. Hello, Rich Locks. <laughs> we're, we're, um, we're YouTube famous now is what's happening. Thank you very much. So this literally in context, you guys, it's up on Twitter. You're welcome to go look, but it's a response on Twitter in context of the time. And if you look at November, the videos that were being made around that time, it was literally Dustin and Nick all saying, Oh, we're all getting cease and desist. Oh, we're all getting sued. Somebody had a, um, without a crystal ball is going to sue me video. I think it was Nick on the viewer's voice, but that's what was happening at this time because people were saying, not Lorianne. I don't think she and I ever had any direct um, stuff on Twitter. I think she might've called me unlicensed. I was getting called at this time very much a, you know, 
lawyer. There was a lot of allegations that I was not licensed to practice. I am, but whatever, that I wasn't, um, that I shouldn't be talking about these cases, that kind of stuff. So I was like, oh, oh, there it is. But that has literally a, I don't know why it's in context because it doesn't seem like it's attached to this email and it's in this, it's not a separate exhibit. It's not referenced for anything. It's just there. And it must've been screenshotted because I've changed my profile picture since, but it, I, okay. Like, but not relevant and not talking about Lorianne, literally talking about people fucking with me because right. Trying to fuck with lawyers doesn't go well. And people were trying to tweet at me and say that uh, I needed to stop talking about the case. That sentiment, by the way, hasn't gone away. I, uh, I keep hearing those statements over and over that we shouldn't be talking about the case. Nobody should be covering the case. Nobody should read the court documents in the case. We're on our like fourth lip glossing, third lip glossing for the evening. Just y'all. There's a few more of these emails. <clears throat> this one involves me and creep show. Hi creep show. This is from, this is a different email address. This is from the next day. This, this, yeah, let's see. So this is in timeline context of when these emails were, but it literally had nothing to do with Lorianne and it was a reply. And um, the fact that it's, you can tell it's a reply, but it's taken out of context. I'm like, mm -hmm. uh, creep show. You're also famous. Hey girl. Hey, <laughs> did he have any repercussions for him and Kim doxing the other person? They have made videos sharing the person's docs. In fact, creep show art did one. Will anything be put out? So this woman's information will not stop spreading. And I appreciate that this is a consistent concern. I hope I can keep my identity hidden. I hope a judge sees what they do to innocent people. I shouldn't have to move and get a new phone. No one should. No one should be doxxed. Firm anti-doxing policy. No one should be doxxed. Um, I have three children and three grandkids. I sent some random screenshots that are not in order. I made one comment about Emily. That's it. It's in the screenshots. I haven't seen them. I don't. Okay. Um, and it was probably one of the fakey lawyer comments. So then... There is another screenshot, just Brown asking, what's the date and time of this one? This is a response. This we know to be one of Lorianne's, um, her main Twitter account. My email has been posted a few times. It's also on the section of the pleading that you tweeted, along with my office address and phone number. My invitation still stands. You can help us collect more evidence throughout the night. Bring food. Is that harassing you guys? I need to know. Tell me, am I misreading things? I want to know your opinion. Um, I'm waiting to hear back for the lawyer, for the other Lori. And then this is a very long kind of breakdown. It looks like over multiple emails about how she felt about how KJ was being treated, about when she started watching her um, because of a particular TV show, about that she feels Katie's been treated horribly. Um she said she was glad I could open up to her. Here's the thing though. I'm older. I have kids as a mom. I could not believe what I was experiencing. I reached out to her around April. I told her my life story. Is that having a relationship? Is that not having a relationship? Help me out. I did this because she was covering something that I could relate to. She said she was glad I could open up to her. She never questioned me and I never questioned her. It was the only real conversation we had and it ended there. I, I, I have questions. People attacked in Twitter uh, and berated Katie on Twitter every day. They criticized everything about her. Again, not okay at all. Every tweet Katie made about these accounts would berate her, though I have seen Katie do her fair... Uh, her fair share of attacking, but I get it. There were people um, that were after Katie made YouTube channels and their only goal was to torment her. One of those accounts was made by Kim Fulmer. She made a video warning people to be aware of fake accounts. I commented on the video, aren't you a fake account? The, on and on and on with, there is like the underground, the other stuff, the other context of the stuff. Um, I was still mad that these people could torment others and just get away with it to silence people. I mean, uh, yeah, people shouldn't harass other people on the internet. It just happens. Um, 
but also it isn't just happening on the KJ side of the case because I could, we're not even getting into the, the stuff I've received, but it just, okay. It's yes, it is the internet. People shouldn't be harassing others. They do. Um, I only highlighted it because it it's me. Um, as far as Emily Baker goes, hi, I'm Emily Baker. I've never communicated with her at all. I didn't think so either. I've never watched any of her videos and stay away from her on Twitter. Totally fair. I have made one comment in reference to her and it was in response to someone else's comment that it said she no longer practiced law. Not true, but okay. I said, I hope she tells people that and a lot of people like her content. I believe I made this comment in one of Katie's chats. Oh, in the, in the chats where people are like, be truthful with your audience. One of those kind of chats. Cool. I believe I made this comment in one of Katie's chats. Emily took that one tweet and made threats at me. Like, don't fuck around with attorneys. No, I sure didn't. Sure didn't. Sure didn't. That was not in response to you at all. Um, but y'all can see what's on Twitter because it's on Twitter. She spread her threat. That was a threat. That was, wait, was I, it's very threatening. Trying to fuck with lawyers on Twitter never goes well. Uh, it had literally nothing to do with her, but okay. Um, I also said it was funny. She spread threats and tweets about me all over the place. I didn't. I don't think I ever tweeted at her once. In fact, I think I blocked the blood tall account when she was calling me un not a practicing lawyer, I think but I didn't interact with her at Twitter at all, but you guys can go look at Twitter. She also talked very derogatory about me in her videos. You don't watch my videos. What did I say about her in my videos? She doesn't watch my videos. I don't think I've ever talked about her in my videos other than the declaration when I read the declaration, but cool. If you don't watch, I don't understand the contradictory there, but okay. She shared someone else's docs and said it was me. That was in the filing. I didn't say it was you. I said the declaration says this. It contained the other Lori's work address, work number, work email. Many creators have now made similar videos. Yes, many. Um, spreading this other Lori's information for no reason other than harass, stock, and embarrass. No, we were just reading the filings. And then this stuff was in the declaration. This is getting into how she felt about Saltsy. Um, I sent him a DM and told him that he docks the wrong person, hoping to do damage control and protecting this person as much as I could. And it seemed he shared that and said it was um, Lorianne threatening him. That was in one of these declarations. Now we're just sitting in junior high going, okay, well, what she said was, but no, no, but then what he said was, but no, 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 then what she said was. But then these other kids, I overheard them talking at gym class and what they said was, no, I heard them. Yeah, no, well, I didn't really hear them all the way because like, I don't watch their videos, but whatever. Sweet baby Jesus. This keeps going on. Um, I've never watched any of the Tati videos. I've never spoken with KJ on the phone. I'm not a paying member of her channel, so I couldn't talk in the chat. And that's why she sent the DM, which is also in her declaration. Um, so that was the letter she compiled to, it looks like Brown kind of laying out her perspective on things. Um, I apologize for the random emails. This is from the 5th. This talks about, it talks about her family. Can I call you? This is still the fifth. This was her new, um, her new, her new Twitter header. I think this was, um, I think this was her referring to herself as the victim. I'm not sure. I don't know why it's in here. Um, to be honest, I don't, I don't look, it makes me so frustrated. That was going about Twitter. Uh, trying to set up a phone call. I don't recall her watching Toddy in any of the videos I watched. So her saying, I don't think she covered Toddy in the time I watched her channel. Okay. Um, that's what I thought. Thanks. So this is still January 5th. Um, I don't know why this is bingo, but thanks for your apology. That was also in the declaration that she filed with salts. Thinking about this more, it might be difficult for you to file this declaration on your own rather than have me since you're not a party to the lawsuit. Katie is okay with having me file it. Let me know if that works for you. So this is the first time they really talked about her filing a declaration on January 5th. 
prior to that KJ declaration that said, we don't even know her. I'm fine with that. I contacted you because of doxing the wrong Lori. That's how it started. And that seemed to be the focus in the other declaration too. Like it seems that the focus here is consistent with, but that's the wrong person. Um, these are still from the fifth. And then it just kind of goes, they're talking about the declaration. They're, uh, you and Kim Fuller docs the wrong person again. You will hear about it next week. Please stop harassing me. I've already asked you to leave me alone. I don't know if there's more to that or not, but that was in another, that screenshots elsewhere in these court filings. That's from Lorianne DMing Saltz when she said she told him it was the wrong person. He included it saying, it can't be the wrong person if I, if it's a dox, it's not the wrong person because doxing is your own information that kind of thing. So I think that the reading on that was you dox the wrong person, like, Hey, you're messing with the wrong person. Not like, Hey, there's another actual Lorianne, which is why I think in the email you see Brown joking with Lorianne saying, Oh, he said you threatened him. Like, and I can, this is the thing. This is the thing with the internet. You dox the wrong person. Do you mean you messing with the wrong person? Or do you mean literally there's another person with the same name that is not me? It's the internet. Um, on and on about the declaration. Did you see the tweet? He said, did saying I was being added to the witness list or something. He's been tweeting about me. I haven't looked. Twitter. Yeah, he threatened to add you to the lawsuit. Again, adding someone as a witness is not adding them to the lawsuit, which um, makes me feel like this was spinning it up a little bit. But again, it's litigation. That happens. <laughs> but he threatened to add you to the lawsuit. It's ridiculous. You hurt his feelings. And then here's a draft declaration. And then they include three draft declarations, declaration of Lorianne. This was not all the way edited. There are three of them attached, different iterations of them. They're not signed. I don't know what they want the court to do with this. They're not signed declarations. Um, also it says it's Kate, Katie's declaration and her name's at the bottom. True. Um, Maybe add that they also included her work address, general phone number, the agency, and direct line. Looks good. Great. Trying to figure out what we can say about the harassment you've received. Should we just say you've taken down your accounts because of it? So this is more conversation. Yes, I've been harassed since then. And then talking about why. Basically, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. They purposely did this late Christmas Eve because they knew nothing would come of it. They laughed and said, Merry Christmas. This is Lorianne's frustration, clearly. Okay, the Christmas Eve timing of this is especially nice, right? Snark, fine, whatevs. Um, yep, Emily had a great time streaming it too. I don't think I streamed it. I think it was a pre-recorded video, but cool. She did a stream on Christmas Eve and did another one when he filed that 17 page document. Yes, we cover lawsuits here. One had 133,000 views. The other had 56,000 views. Uh, several others were done too. One had 1.3 thousand view comments. The other had 390. I couldn't stomach to look at the comments. I don't think our comments are mean. I mean, I, I don't see every single comment on this channel, but we always encourage the comments not to be mean. It's conversation. We've got to be almost done. Um, these two did videos on it as well and showed close-ups of the documents. I don't know who they're talking about. I imagine it's Creepshow, um, and I don't know who else, but there were other screenshots that aren't attached here. Um, he's not corrected his error. Again, they're saying... It seems that they're saying Saltz didn't correct the Kim Fulmer declaration, but nobody had, conf it seems in the conversation of this that nobody had told him it was the wrong one because Brown said earlier in his declaration, like, well, why would I tell him? Lorianne told him in a DM. Lorianne's DMs attached and the DM is like, you dox the wrong person. So, okay. Okay. I mean, it's splitting hairs at this point. <sighs> it's splitting hairs at this point. Thanks. Um, convert more just life conversation and declaration, another version of the declaration that still is not, you know, another version of the conversation. Um, 
this was obviously not meant literally is the exact same language in one of KJ's declarations, which I found interesting based on the very limited nature of my interactions with Ms. Paulson. I believe Ms. Paulson made that comment in reference to the fact that I had at one time been critical of her online, but had changed my mind and sent a few messages in support. Um, I believe it's called hyperbole. <laughs> Same wording, which was interested to me. This interesting to me. This is talking about her being a member of the channel, showing the super chats. And then we're getting into, is it going to be signed? This is January 6th. There's, I told you there's a lot of email. How's it going to get signed? When's it going to get signed? I have a scanner app on my phone. Um, can we talk? Yes, we can. Can you send them to scan? I was thinking email, but it doesn't make sense. This is still January 6th. Join the club. Just little back and forth. Um, no, here it is. I made the signature page separate, a separate page. So you don't need to re-sign if we do need to make tweaks. Of course, I will not make any changes without you reviewing them, which again is fair and is not as, um, outrageous as presented in the other declaration. So if Lori Ann interpreted it this way, then in her declaration, it indicates like it made me uncomfortable. They wanted me to just sign the sheet and then still make tweaks. He said, of course, I won't make any changes without you reviewing them. So her declaration plus his declaration, it's, it's, there's a conflict there for sure. Um, so there's a conflict there for sure. This is another version of the declaration that's not signed. So it literally has no evidential value at all. Um, which is why we're not going through all of them. Cause again, they weren't signed, uh, signature app. How can we sign it? Talking about how to sign it. I think we might want to hold off and file this separately. Again, Brown says he decided not to file it, but this says we're going to file it separately a little later to give us a chance to digest and respond to the new craziness in the most recent filing. Fair, fair, fair. And then they're still talking about signing it, but it doesn't say we're not signing it or we're not filing it. It just says we'll file it separately. So it doesn't, it doesn't say to me, I've decided not to file it. It says I've decided not to file it right now. Nothing to indicate they're still talking about getting it signed, not saying don't sign anything. They're still saying, okay, it's a app that you download to sign and then email it back. I think the printer's out of ink. I can go to the store and get some still talking about signing it. Whatever you want to do. Walmart's is just 10 minutes from me. Like still talking about signing it. <clears throat> after that. <clears throat> what kind of paper do we need? I appreciate this. As I look at Salt's newest filing, I think I need more time to digest it and craft a response that deals with all of it. It's just lunacy the way he acts like he's broken open some conspiracy between you and Katie to suppress evidence, um, evidence that would be totally irrelevant if it existed. I mean, <sighs> It's a jurisdiction motion. She lives in Washington. If she's an agent, then it's relevant. If she's not, then it's not. Conversations can clear that up that obviously they talk to one another. Okay, we're almost done. He's making an example out of me. He's making sure no one will step forward for Katie. And if they do, they will have their private information exposed. I can completely understand where she's coming about uh, at with that. Brown's co-signing it and saying, yep, that's exactly what they're doing. Again, attorneys are on the side that they're on. Um, Katie 50 and super chats, I think including the three, it totaled like 2,700 spent on her channel, sent some other to the channel. Uni rock, uni rocks in here too. Another thing I wanted to add Kim and the other trolls all found my threat entertaining. They thought it was a joke. I think that goes to the um, murderous biker gang even though they just said biker gang. Um, do you have any evidence we could point to for that? This is on the seventh. There's a blank page here. I'll look. Um, this Twitter thread is from December 30th. And then the screenshots were omitted. Sorry for this mess. This is embarrassing. And this is going into Twitter stuff. That's completely just other background stuff. Um, do you have the highlighted one handy going into screenshots? I think Saltz was mad that I tweeted his firm information. It's literally on all the filings. Uh, okay. I tweeted it at him with a question about who he was, what one of his closest worker bees posted this. And this is information. This is from the seventh. This is just more Twitter stuff that happened. 
I'm told they'll be serving you a subpoena tomorrow. I assume they've figured out your address. This is from the seventh. Um, do they know I'm not the other Lori yet? This is from the seventh. What should I do? Um, oh, and this is her saying, basically telling me to cooperate or else. So at least that came from this, her perception of basically telling me to cooperate or else, though that's not how it was presented in the, in the motion, but she is saying that of her own, who is so-and-so what DMS let's talk about the subpoena in the morning. This is still about the Twitter subpoena. They got a copy of it. Um, if you're a friend of Lori Ann, then you can tell her that we're not here for her. I don't know if this was initiated by someone else. This is a screenshot provided to them. There's no foundation for it. Um, if you're a friend of Lori Ann, then you can tell her that we're not here for her. However, because of her actions of inserting herself into our case, she's now a witness as such, it's better to cooperate with us and to tell us what she knows privately and voluntarily. Otherwise we'll be, we will be going to court to force her to testify and hand over documents subpoenas. And if she deleted documents and evidence, she could, it looks like says get in trouble for that. There's, and then there's missing part cooperate with us and tell us what she knows privately and voluntarily. Um, and if she deleted documents, she could get in trouble for that. We want to avoid all of that, find out what she knows and let her go. Thank you in advance for being a good friend of Lori. And it's obvious that you care. So that's what they're talking about. Um, in the, was he trying to send threats through a third party? That's how they've characterized this. You've seen it, read it as you will. Um, and then this looks like it's between more other parties, but it's not clarified because there's no foundation for any of this, but okay. Can you get me the whole screenshot of the message saying you could get in trouble? Yes, he won't stop, but these are DMS to another person. Okay. Um, your last email was blank. This is redacted. So it's taken out intentionally. So it's not just blank. It's taken out. This is, we're now at January 8th. Um, I still believe they think I'm the other Lori. I think she is going to get served. So this is back to the concern about the other Lori, which is the most consistent thread in all of this. Um, other email address. We're still on January 8th. This is asking about where she lives. I'm not going through that. And I redacted some of that out, but we're not getting into that. Friday, January 8th. Do they know I'm not the other lawyer or do you even know? So this is starting to read of frustration to me on January 8th. Like, do they know I'm not the other lawyer? Do you even know I'm not the other lawyer? Um, I'm so angry. I think this is a different email. Yes, this is a different email address um, from him saying, I don't know if they know if they knew it would make it even more remarkable that they haven't corrected the record. So I don't, on January 8th, Brown is still saying, I don't know if they know that it's that that information is not related to you. Um, I've been convinced that you are not her. You're willing to sign a sworn declaration saying so that's generally a solid indication. Someone is telling the truth. Here's how the process plays out. This is very much a recitation of this is what happens. You're not in trouble. I, you know, you should not destroy evidence. This is a very fair, like very fair breakdown of like, take a deep breath. This is how this works. Great. Then, by the way, I didn't mean to suggest you should be avoiding being served. So then clarifying like, yikes, that could have been taken a different way. Um, did you get a visit today? I'm assuming about the subpoena. Um, nope. Then asking about the subpoena. Um, I guess I can just call him. This is later in that day, January 8th. I guess I can just call him and authorize YouTube and Twitter to give him all of it. I'm caught in the middle. I used to volunteer for legal services. Maybe they can help me. So this is now a, I didn't get served. It reads to me like, fuck it. Just like whatever messages he wants, I don't care. I don't think the sheriff will help them in any way. Actually, I don't think the sheriff does process serving. Why would you need help from legal services? This is in Lorianne's declaration too. So these are the emails that Salt said, hey, we'll provide these. But now here they are. Um, email from Ms. Barnhart to Mr. Brown sealed supplemental declaration of Brown. So now there's something, there's something under seal, which means it's private for the court to see and the parties to see and not to be seen publicly. Um, hopefully that's to protect private information. So we're not going to speculate on what that is. That's not unusual. That happens in a lot of the cases. And it is in the... Um, the most recent case we're talking about that has stuff under seal is the wedding dress case with Haley Page. 
Um, this is still in the evening on January 8th. Are you stressed about having the process server come? Fair question. It's very obvious that his behavior is legal. This is Lori responding to Brown on the evening. A successful high-powered attorney that wins all his cases knows the law. I'll let him continue with it. Everyone believes what he's saying about me. Over a million people know all about me. Now I've put others at risk for all of this. Because of me, others are at risk too. I can't show up at Lori's home or work, harass her and her family. Now too, all thanks to me, I'm done. So you see the frustration that you then see, I think, continuing in her later declaration of kind of what I've thought all along is that she really wants the other Lori to not be in the mix of all of this, which seems consistent from everything of anything that's consistent. It's that this is from the 10th. Sorry. I was upset. Went to Twitter. She has to file these court documents. It was the first time I've read them. He's still allowed to do this. This is talking about salt um, and not wanting her information out there and broadcast all over the internet. This seems to be in response to good morning. How are you doing? Um, that's that email again. I understand I'm preparing something to file tomorrow. This is from Sunday, January 10th. Um, please understand that based on what you and Katie told me, you've done nothing illegal. Uh, I agreed. The only issue in the case is that you have a connection to personal jurisdiction. Agreed. I recommend you sit tight and accept service if they come to your door. So she still hasn't been served with a subpoena. Um, this is still from Sunday. I think I just figured out what is going on. I was only close to one person during this time. And I told her a lot about myself and how I was feeling about things. They have used me to be the violent one. Since I lashed out and said those comments, they want my Twitter messages between she and I, I told her I did have family that were rough. I wonder in this, Emily wondering if she's emailing Brown saying, I figured out what's going on. I was only close to one person. Is she talking about KJ? I don't know. But based on her statement above, she says, I told her my whole life story. So they want my Twitter messages between she and I. Is she talking about her relationship with KJ at this point? Um, I think we've switched to a different email address at this point. Sunday, 10, uh, 110. They probably will add me now. So because of me, all of Katie's followers, I crazy and violent about me. So all because of me, all of Katie's followers. Okay. Um, I don't see any angle they could use to make a legal claim against you. Uh, again, I agree. Witness, witness to jurisdiction at this point. Um, but now if there is mass flagging and other stuff with the agency stuff, then maybe more, but still might not be really relevant to the defamation very relevant to the jurisdiction. Once the jurisdiction's done, then it's done. This is from the 10th. That's a much bigger picture. She was Facebook friends with me too. I think she's talking about KJ. This is why they've been relentless after me since May, trying to provoke me, make me angry. She knows I have relatives that are thugs and felons, but I have never communicated with them over this. I was being played this whole time. This is why Saltz keeps trying to entice me. He's saying, if I don't turn over the information, we will add you to this lawsuit. Again, I think they're talking about the witnessing and subpoenaing. So is giving the subpoena to me considered service now? Can you tell me what's going on with the other lawyer? Does she know about this? Or did you already know about this? I will call him tomorrow. This is all from Sunday, from 7.30, from 7.20, from 7.16. And it seems this seems to be where the shift happens of frustration. I will call him tomorrow. Unfortunately, I see who the slime ball is now. And I'm like, did she just, did we watch it? Did this email chain just show Lorianne going, I feel like I'm being played. I feel like my trust, is that what's happening? I want to know your thoughts. I think I'm being played. I see what ha is happening. I see who the slime ball is now. Is that what just happened in this email thread? Because then after this is when she talked to Saltz. Because Saltz said in his declaration, she talked to him on the 11th. So that's the next morning. This is at 7.52 PM. Is this where she turns on Brown? Is this where it is? Unfortunately, I see who the slime ball is now. Is she referring to Brown? Is that what's happening? I feel like that's what's happening, but Brown's like, what just happened? Like Brown is like, I don't, it's, I don't even, it's nine o'clock on a Sunday. WTF just happened in my email. I am sure Brown was like, I don't even know. I don't even know. And then 
He responds, you've not been served with a subpoena yet. You did not authorize me to accept on your behalf. I have not heard back from the lawyer from Dot yet. I'll call him tomorrow. When you say she was Facebook friends with you, does that mean Katie or someone else? So Brown was on the same train of thought. We all just went on with who is she? I'm confused by your messages this evening. Same, all of us. Are you saying you and Katie are Facebook friends? Who are you referring to? I'm available to talk if you like. I think Brown is now seeing like what just happened. What just happened? Um, can you please talk before you do anything? This is Monday. The, so this is the day we know she contacts Saltsy based on the other filing. Can you please talk with me before you do anything? I think there's been a misunderstanding. Something else must have happened, but we don't know what it is. I'd like to have a chance to clear it up. We'll be filing an objection today. And I think it's the other declaration came down and she was like, oh, I see now. I see now. Here's the other declaration. You've all cleared up that we're not really friends. I've been thrown under the bus and now I see. My conspiracy speculation to the monuments of the gods. Um, we will be filing an objection to Salsa's latest declaration. I'd like to include a statement from you if you're on board with that. Redacted. No more emails from Lori Ann. Brown said, I don't see anything that would get you in legal trouble. You don't need to spend money to hire a lawyer to respond to the subpoena. I'd like to stand up for you by filing your dec declaration. If you let me, it costs me nothing. It costs you nothing. Lori, you're wrong about me not believing you. It oh, this is redacted. So there was a conversation in here. You're wrong about me not believing you. I have taken you at your word throughout this. I don't know what you mean that we agreed to give them what they want. Can you explain? Can you please discuss on the phone? Brown is at this point literally going, what in the ever living fuck is happening right now? I really think you will feel better if we do so. Like, come on, let's just get on the phone. We're going to sort it out. We're going to figure it out. We're filing something today redacted. I understand this is very stressful. At least speak with me about it. So something in here was disclosed that's been redacted. Can you speak to me about it? Redacted, redacted, redacted. And then these are from January 6th. So I think something happened and um, that we saw it turn. Exhibit C is a, another email from Brown that's already covered um, exhibit D is just the Fulmer declaration being emailed that was separate from the chain. This is Twitter. I'm at the office after court. We've all seen this go down on Twitter in November. This was the same November 4th day that I was getting, getting flack and being threatened to be sued and all of that. Um, impersonating lawyers is a crime. Seems like somebody's pretending to be a lawyer. We, you've all seen it. It's all, I think most of it's still on Twitter. Well, this isn't because she took her Twitter down, but his stuff is. Um, I'm at the office. You can convince me that I'm an imposter. Sus, salts, imposter. He vented. She saw him vent. She saw him vent. And that's what happened. Ah, this is a creep shows video <laughs> with a screenshot of, of my handwriting going what? So there's creep show. Um, there's my face. I like that. They pick the screenshots of me looking horrendously like a turtle. Much appreciated. Um, this was a live coffee and cursy words where we went over the press of pay. Um, I'll link it below if you want to see it. This is this is questions that seemed to be irrelevant to this whole thing. Um, Lori Ann used to be a loyal view viewer, she's no longer. Okay, cool. Um, thank you, Lori Ann. You're a class act. We all saw that happen, and that's it. We're done. Oh, fucking god, holy fucking god, we're done, we're done, we're done. We're done. We're done. Jesus. I, um, <laughs> I love that for you too. <laughs> Creep show. Love that for you. Um, y'all y'all, I'm going to go back through the comments, answer questions and see what y'all think. Um, we have almost 7,000 law nerds watching up here live on a, on a on a fuck it's not Friday it's Saturday um if you're here and you're new to my channel and you want to keep seeing this be covered it's not the only thing we cover it just has the most legal filings at the moment go ahead and subscribe to the channel go ahead and thumbs up this video this is a marathon not a sprint y'all y'all did I think at the end we watched um we watched it turn I don't know. I really do feel like I was turtle chic in that. 
we watched it turn in those last emails and there were some things redacted. I'm sure there was stuff um, covered about stress. I, I'm sure there is stuff covered by or about how she was feeling and that's why it was redacted. I don't know if the other side has those emails. They may, they may not have them from Lorianne, but I don't know what tipped that, but you saw it turn in those emails going, oh, got you, 10-4, and you see it shift. I I am here for whatever you guys think happened. It's just, there is clearly a lot of frustration that this is being talked about. However, the only reason this is being talked about on the internet, my opinion, is because when the Toddy Westbrook business partner case broke, which we know from other court documents, KJ was the first to break. She's made it clear it's in the court filings more than once. That was sent to entertainment news, e like every online outlet. So that story kind of blew up and it looked like that was intentionally sent out to get that story out there about that court filing. That seemed to be considered based on the video clips I've seen of KJ saying, these are all the outlets I've contacted and sent that story. So that story took off and I saw other channels talking about it and went, oh, that's very interesting. And then you open that first page of that document and it's like, this is a, a lawsuit about the defendant's greed. And you're like, in a world where there are lawsuits about YouTube, Toddy Westbrook said she was friends with James Charles. And then he went on to promote Sugar Bear Hair. <gasps> and, and that's how that whole thing read. That whole thing read like, oh my God. Oh my God. And then there were screenshots. There were things. No, there weren't. There weren't receipts in that one. It was the next one. So it all read like, what? And then this happened so quick in time that everybody's like, wait, another one? And then, and then nonsense on the internet. And everyone was talking about it because we all watched it play out in real time. If stuff stopped happening, we would all stop talking about it. Nothing has stopped happening yet. So I'm going to try to get some questions. Y'all... Let me know your thoughts. Um, it was definitely a speed run because I pre-read it. <laughs> I did not try to read it contemporaneously because it is so long. And the thing is, I don't know if the judge will read it. I don't know if the judge will read it. It is substantially long and most of it doesn't have to do with jurisdiction. Most of it has to do with um, attacking the Lorianne declaration, but based on the legal standard for this type of motion, factual disputes just default to the non-moving side. So, so the plaintiff in this case, so most of it's irrelevant, but it's hundreds of pages of it. And I, I feel like this was, um, it uh, clearly their side felt very strongly about getting this out there. But at the end of the day, Lorianne signed the declaration she signed. So if this goes to trial, will Lorianne be a witness about all of this nonsense? No, this all goes to jurisdiction. All of it, all of it. Did Salty throw Brown under the fucking bus in his, in his um, declaration? And did Lorianne throw it under the bus in her declaration? Yep. So did he respond? Yep. Could he have addressed it if the court asked him about those things? Yep. Do I fault him for wanting to make a record? Nope. This was a lot of a record though. This was more than I think the court will read. I th There's a research attorney somewhere going, oh, fucking God. Why is there so much here? Why are there more YouTube videos? Why are there screenshots of Twitter? Why are there Twitter replies that don't have the, the original thing up at the top? <sighs> there are lightsaber lip glosses involved. Is that the third? Is that the fourth? We have so much lip gloss. Um. Yeah. You guys, this is just bananas. It's just bananas. Let's try to, <laughs> we've gotten into Sunday afternoon. <laughs> it feels, Sarah Justice, like we are watching it in slow motion. I'm going to try to catch up on some of the super chats that I still see populating on my um, on my screen. I see Catherine Watson, thank you, saying my thanks is long overdue. I had gotten that one. Sue M screen <laughs> super chatted to say she stole my name and I sorted it with Salty. That's kind of funny. Um, Cherokee Rose said, yeah, F it. Um, I see that. See, Myra Ruin said, in honor of your perseverance and badassery, thank you for the super chats. 
Rena said, question, hypothetically, if LA deliberately led on the defense, but then never actually signed a declaration, could that be caught? Could that cause her any legal issues? Yeah. That goes into a whole lot of speculation. I, I mean, if you read those emails that we just went through, I don't think it was deliberately misleading. Something turned those emails from my reading of it, but no one's obligated to sign a declaration Again, someone's going to have to parse the truth in this. You guys have seen all of it. Parse what you believe. These are all court declarations. Both sides are going to put it in the light most favorable to themselves. Lorianne chose to sign what she chose. And that's what we got to go with. That's what we've got to go with. So that's what we're going with. Um, I feel the desperation of Katie's lawyer when he realized Lori was flipping on him because of their actions. I you can read it in those emails that it's like, what the fuck is happening? What the fuck is happening? Nope, 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 nope. What is happening? Nope, nope. Stop it. Um, are we still in jurisdiction, Karen? It's a fantastic idea. Um, I don't, Betty, I don't know. I'm sure KJ did a live the night she flipped. I'm sure someone will tie together those timelines. We have them. I don't know enough about it to say it. Um, question. Can we get y'all t-shirts for merch, please? I will make sure it's not trademarked by somebody. Question. Is it weird to say they are just going after women? There are guys that have covered this, but they aren't mentioned at all. Interesting, isn't it? Interesting, isn't it? Um, yeah, interesting, isn't it? So, um, brown panic emails are so our own thoughts. I mean, you can see it. You, the, the emails just show you in real time something shifting her perception to being like, oh, I feel like I'm being played. Um, you guys are saying it's KJ's video the night that is what happened. Uh, okay, KJ's video that night is what happened. I'm going to have to wait for one of y'all to make a video and go back and take a look at that. Yes, all of our brains are saying y'all. So, so there we go. That is we'll have to take a look at what that video was, if it's still up or not. You guys, this is the thing about it playing out on the internet. You see it happening. So if there is a video and if that video went, oh, I see, like, oh, I see how this is all going. My bad. I feel like I was played. We're watching that happen in real time right now with Trisha Paytas. Oh, oh, I now see how it is. I now have the 411. Do we still say that anymore? I do. I'm old. I see how it is now. Fuck that. Trisha was like, nope, I see the writing on the wall. I'm not going down with any of y'all ships. I'm pulling the pin of this grenade and we're just going off. And that's what's been happening in the Trisha Paytas drama. The, the hair by Jay video sparked it. There was no loyalty there. She felt she got dissed by her friends and she was like, I see the writing on the wall. Fuck it. I'm going to say all the things. Is that what happened here with Lorianne? She saw the writing on the wall and went, oh, oh, I see. No, fuck it. I'm going to say all the things. Is that what happened here too? Is Lorianne the Trisha Paytas of this situation saying, no, I, I see it now. F I'm not doing this. I'm I want to know. Um, This is going to cost KJ so much money to process in court. If it keeps going like this, I mean, this is just pre-litigation. This is normally where you kind of keep it low to keep costs low because it gets more expensive the later you get into litigation. Um. Did KJ's side submit those emails themselves? Yes. Atira, did I miss something or was there anything about Lorianne not knowing what she was signing and what side she was supporting? It might have been in the parts that were redacted or filed under seal, filed under seal for the court because there is a supplemental declaration under seal that might have to do with other things. So there is something filed under seal. It's alluded to, so we don't know. Um, and it might be a holistic running mama that she is just mad that KJ threw her under the bus. Perfectly true. Um, thank you, Sorry, Michael. I'm having trouble hearing. Siri, I'm not talking to you. Um, yeah, we were at 6,700 law nerds tonight. It was awesome. And we're like, oh my God, we're two and a half hours in. I'm going to look for a few more mods. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. I am going to pull a few more questions and then like, this is wrap up number one. <laughs> What typically happens in a federal courtroom when one party continues to ignore page limit? The court generally has stern words. We've already seen one minute order about it. The court, 
I imagine this is going to be like when your mom pulls over the car and has to turn around and look at you, that both attorneys are going to get the, like, what is ha- Like, everyone's getting yelled at. Everyone's going to get yelled at. And then the court will make some rulings. I'm very interested to see, because we've litigated so hard in this case on the jurisdiction issue on both sides. I'm very interested to see if um, the court being asked to take over the order to show cause with regard to the stuff that's been happening on social media will be the court being like, you're asking me to actually take action in this case. And because you're actually asking me to take action in this case, don't try to say that fast. It's a, it's my tongue is having a difficult time with the way I formed that sentence. We've also been live a lot today. Um, if the court just says, look, you're asking me to take jurisdiction over this case. Do you want me to do this? Cause okay, now I have jurisdiction. Cause the court set a briefing schedule for the, for the status conference. And the status conference is asking the court from the defense, take control of this and stop this from going on. Well, to do that, the court has to have authority. And to do that, the court has to have jurisdiction. So the court might just say, you're asking me to take jurisdiction. Why are you wasting our time with all these other filings? We'll see. We'll see. We will see. I'm very interested to see what you guys are saying because y'all, this is just... This is just, um, I, I, we saw it in the emails. We saw it just like, so we saw it. Um, question, why would they redact anything? It doesn't make sense. We don't know the contents of what was redacted. It could have personal information, private information, sensitive information, and go to the court. It seems that there is something under seal. So the court will know and, Whenever attorneys do that, I trust that they are doing that for proper reasons. Look, every, we all are aware that this case is being discussed because Toddy Westbrook is such a big YouTuber and because of Dramageddon and Carmageddon, there is still interest in Toddy, even though she's not on the internet. And then because you've got another party that keeps talking about this case, there is continued interest in this case and stuff keeps happening to move it along. At this point, we're in the middle of like a 1L Civ Pro class here on the YouTubes talking about all of this procedure and legal issues also talking about YouTubers that we're familiar with. So, um, if, if there is stuff that's sensitive, it's appropriate to put that in a redacted filing or to put that in a under seal filing and to be mindful of that fact, knowing that this is going to be discussed here. So I, whenever attorneys do that, I always kind of default to, Hey, they're doing this for a reason. I trust they know the reason. You've got to just say, if it's under seal, the court, if it shouldn't be under seal, will say this shouldn't have been under seal, but at least give the court an opportunity to make that determination. No problem with it at all. Snarky Coffee, great handle. Question, did Colonel Mustard kill someone with the wrench in the ballroom while wearing a red dress? That was the murderous conspiracy. And yes, but it might not have been the ballroom. It, oh, or it could have been a candlestick. It could have been a candlestick. <laughs> Thank you, Creep Show. Um, question, Emily, you should show how Brown tried to clarify about the wrong Lori Ann. That shows Brown doing his job behind the scenes. I did show that in the video. We did talk about that, about how he was trying to sort it out with the Department of Transportation. Absolutely talked about it earlier in the video when it came up um, at that point. Totally did. So how much would this chat cost in lawyer, like this chat here or that chat there? And it depends on how they're billing. <laughs> this chat here, we're, we're billing three hours for this chat for sure. <laughs> um, the nerdy duckling said 2,700 is jurisdiction. I mean, it might, w- it might well be that the court just goes with that, but the back and forth emails, it just depends how much time it depends if with all of this going on, what Brown chose to bill his client for that's totally and squarely and appropriately between them filing the motion is another thing. This just, I mean, Ashley, we're, there's, there's nowhere else to pop off on this. It's just, it's just, I can hear my mom yelling. I will turn this car around. Don't try me. I feel like that scene in Harry Potter where Ron gets a howler is like, what this first court appearance is going to be like, because it's also going to be digital. So 
It's going to be phone or conference call. And I feel like it's going to be Ronald Weasley. How dare you steal the car? I f- Lawyers, Michael and Michael, how dare you file precipice? I feel like that's what's ha- that's going to happen in court. The page limits, the amount of Twitter. I could go on. I'm going to just make myself laugh. <laughs> uh, question. Do you think Brown doesn't know KJ is talking about the lawsuit in her lives? I, I have no idea. I'm sure he's watching what his client is doing. I mean, I, I don't know. That's between them. I, because we've seen it be discussed on social, this, all the Twitters are coming up. There has to be an awareness. I would imagine. Can the judge remove a lawyer if she believes there are actual threats going on? Um, it, I, it would be interesting to see what a court would do with that. I think there would be admonishments first, but we will see. Um, Pascal said that was a long ride. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, it was. That was a long ride. I think the research attorney is probably saying no. Yeah. Cause they have other cases like this. And this judge was just handling the parlor case. Um, shouldn't the factual disputes be discussed in court rather than now? Well, y- yes, they should have been in the motions, but then the precipice added more information. So this is the only really way to respond. But did there need to be an additional precipice to the other precipice? No, but they felt that there did. So they're going to file it to do what they think they need to do. And that's a tactical decision. And the court, because of the way that the factual disputes will be resolved, there shouldn't have been for me as much argument in this this was written like a motion, but it was a declaration. And the court's going to be like, but this is a motion that you just hid in a declaration. Like you can't just call it a declaration and make it be so. It it reads like a motion, not like a declaration. And it's very argumentative, not I saw this, I saw this, we talked about this. I did not say that. Moving on. Um you guys feel bad for Brown. I get it because he thought he had a witness and he was like, okay, we're going. Oh fuck. What's happening. So I wonder if we'll wake up tomorrow morning too. Gosh, I hope not. No, tomorrow's Sunday. There really shouldn't be. There is a filing due next week. I think on Wednesday, uh, if there's more filings, we're going to talk about them on coffee and cursey words. Cause it's almost three hours and it is definitely twinkle twinkle time. I'm going to sweep like two last questions and then we are going to go. The mods have ridden so much this week everyone's everyone's like ass is sore. It's just been a lot. Pam, this is way more entertaining than law school, but yes, it feels like that to me too. Um, for everybody I missed, I'm sorry if I missed super chats. Agree on the research attorney, but also the court clerk having to process all of these. Like guys, we've got another one. Thankfully they do come in digital. So at least they're in order on the docket, but yes. 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 Oh, you guys are sharing what houses you are. I love it. I love that you're sharing your Harry Potter houses. You all are making me so happy. I love you the most. Um, I love it so much. Um, you guys know, based on a quick perusal of Salty's Instagram, that he's a self-professed Slytherin, which is just my, my youngest is also a Slytherin. There are times I, I'm just like, I have Gryffindor spirit, but I'm really a Hufflepuff. I really am. My oldest and my husband are Ravenclaws. I love that we've gotten to have this kind of conversation. I feel like we all know each other much better. I don't know, Christine, if the conference is public. I did not read uh, that part of the order yet. So I don't know. I love that you guys are sharing that. Uh, The judge is going to rule not here for jurisdiction just to get rid of them. Always, always possible. I I mean, maybe that's the strategy. The strategy could be that... um, the judge is just like, no, but also the strategy could backfire and make the judge so annoyed. She's like, you're stuck with me. You are stuck with me. I see you. So we, who knows? We just, hopefully we're going to be done. Um, can Brown drop KJ? I am not going to speculate about their attorney client relationship because it's between them. We don't know if it, they will have to sort out their attorney client relationship. Can attorneys in general, just walk in the middle of a case. Nope. If you've appeared 
for all purposes to the court. You have to go to the court and say, this is why we're leaving. Um, generally, that happens when clients run out of money or there is a significant inability to work together. But the court is involved in that process. It's not just it's like, oh, nope, which is why vetting clients is very um, Im important. So um, let me, I love seeing you guys all sharing here. <laughs> I love seeing you guys sharing all of your Harry Potter houses. You are so my people. I adore you the most. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you guys, I haven't eaten yet. Um, don't all these emails suggest that Lorianne uses socks? It was a lot of email accounts. It was just, it was a lot of email accounts. Um, is Brown now in fact a witness? Could this affect his representation? I, as to the jurisdictional issue, I hadn't really thought about it. Um, and I will noodle on that. I haven't really thought about it because once the jurisdictional bit is cleared, if there's nothing further that's filed with regard to any of this, no, because once jurisdiction is cleared, it's not relevant. Like all of what's happened up till now is not relevant to the defamation. It's relevant to jurisdiction. Now, if it comes up with trying to prove Lori Ann's declaration for other purposes. That's a, that's, there's too many what ifs in that for me to really decide. But is Brown a witness now to what Lori Ann told him? Yes, I'm sure there was another party on the phone. Most lawyers have two parties on the phone whenever anything comes up because the other party can then be the witness. And we'll just see, we'll just see what happens. But you guys, this has been a long night. Thank you so much. Um, do you feel that with both these women, their oars do not go all the way in the water? Heather, we, I'm not going to speculate. I feel like there's a lot of stress and hurt feelings going around in this lawsuit. Um, and I feel like there's frustration that it keeps um, being discussed, but we're going to keep discussing it. It's a lawsuit where we're, we're covering it here. Other channels are going to cover it the way that they do. That's all totally allowed. And so the only problem with reporting on documents is if you say something that the documents don't in fact say, you're allowed to give commentary for all the channels out there. You're allowed to give commentary. You're allowed to give opinion. You're not allowed to defame people. You're allowed to read documents and say, this document said this girl, girl, here we are up in this document. Oh, and that tweets a response to another tweet. And where's the rest of the tweet? Cause that tweet wasn't directed at you, but they're trying to make it seem like it is. And then I can respond to that because I'm like, hey, that's that's my face all, all up on the Twitters. Um, you guys, thank you. Thank you for hanging. Mods, you are the greatest. Thank you, chat. We've had so many people live tonight. We still have over 6,000 people on. You guys are the greatest. This brings up the one last point I'm going to close with. Yes, Toddy Westbrook and her husband, James Westbrook, and the company are the plaintiffs in this suit. But the defense has gotten very deep into fighting with Saltsy. So there is a lot of lawyer fighting going on, which down the road is going to have to shift to focus back on the litigation at hand. Hopefully that will happen after the jurisdiction bit is cleared. If you guys have not done the YouTube -y things and you're new here, um, we'd sure appreciate it if you go ahead and subscribe. It supports what I do up on the channel. And um, we continue to do this. If, if we're going to just continue breaking down documents as they happen, hopefully none of them will ever be this fucking long again. Ever. Like no court document should ever be this long. This is how long transcripts are. Jesus fucking Christ. Nothing should be this long. Lawnards, I appreciate you. I will see you on the socials. You know where to follow me at the Emily D. Baker on the Insta, on the Twitters, here on the YouTubes. Go ahead and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up on the way out. And if you're watching this on the replay, leave a comment about what in the fuck you thought of all of that. Oh, Jesus. I Y'all... There aren't y'all, there just aren't any more words. This is, this was, this was fuckery level red. What the fuckery. And, um, we'll see what fuckery level we have next. And I'll share with you what we came up with for the fuckery levels on Monday on the socials. Tomorrow's my social free day. Somebody just said how many likes we had and I was going to look for it. And then the chat scrolled. So I didn't get to see it, but I'll go check it out right after this. Thank you for being here. Have a good night. I appreciate you. Connect with me everywhere. I'm at the Emily D. Baker. If you guys want to join the text, just text emily.com. If you want to join the channel, lawnerdsunite.com. Happy to have you support what we do here on the YouTube. 